Come on, say good afternoon to you. Welcome aboard yet another edition of the Tom Taylor Sports Show here on this March the 25th. 33 days we've been together, and we love being here each and every day. And, of course, doing it live here on Livestream.com. Then later this evening, you'll be able to pick up and check it out on, oh, gosh, YouTube and TuneIn Radio and iTunes and uh, Stitcher phone app, Stitcher.com. All those again later on this evening or later on today. And, of course, anytime you can go back and watch last week's show, uh, two weeks ago's show, whatever the case may be. But today we're live right here from 1 to 3 on Livestream.com. Good afternoon to you. As we tell you each and every show, we start it by telling you the show is dedicated right here to the man who hung on the cross for us. Without him, uh, I am nothing, obviously, nor is horse, and we understand that totally, and we embrace that. Psalms 32, 7 through 11 says, I am your hiding place. I will protect you from trouble, surround you with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Rejoice in me. I am your hiding place. I will protect you from trouble and surround you with songs of deliverance. Instruct you, teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Rejoice in me. That is our verse for the day out of the book of Psalms 32, uh, verses 7 through 11. Big show again today. We've got the quiz show coming up. Five for five today. Elvis. Elvis. Five for five on the quiz show with Tommy the Apester from Bracken Asphalt Maintenance. Dr. Barry Walton from Max Medicine Mart. Got all kinds of sports related topics to talk about today. Also, Greg Salyer, our weekly Reds report. And Doug Fritz will join us later on in the show, right around 2.30 in the second half of the show, talking a little high school baseball and softball. We'll give you a complete rundown on those. Good afternoon, Horace. How are you, sir? I was wondering if you ever go see me over here. How could I miss you? You're in orange, <laughs> sporting some shorts. You got, a, you got an orange T-shirt and an orange. What's your little shirt say there on the inside? Is it that? Oh, it's my Tommy Bahama. That's Tommy my... Bahama shirt. Yes. Yeah. And so we're over doing show prep, and I hear this, ooh, nachos on a stick. And I said, okay, <laughs> we'll talk about that coming up in a few minutes because it's food related. Now, we got stories today. Ohio State quarterback dilemma going on with Urban Meyer. He's stressed over that. Uh, the Titans, are they, are, are they or are they not for sale? Uh, the Jets and Patriots are at it again in the National Football League. The Vikings say Peterson's not going. He says he is. And so we'll find out about that coming up in a few minutes. We'll discuss that. And we've got a lot of uh, local sports to tell you all about, a lot of high school baseball and softball from yesterday and some uh, tennis. And so those results are coming up here in a few minutes as well. And a story coming up here in just a second out of, uh, out of Knoxville. Hmm. Athletic Director Dave Hart apparently catching some heat. Yeah, I so. wonder why. <laughs> Horace, how are you today, my friend? I'm you good? doing good. All right. How, how are you? I'm doing good. Good. All right. Let's get it going. <laughs> Tell me about this nachos on a stick. You're all excited about that. Nachos this, on a stick. Yeah, you got a new food that's uh, going to be out there at one of the ballparks yeah. this year. Is that right? I, I think so. I mean, that's what they're saying anyways. Right. Let me see where it's from. Where the, where, where the, is here? Uh, While here you're doing Brewers, that? Milwaukee Brewers. All right. You got it set? You ready I, I'm, to go? I'm ready to go here. All right. Tell us about nachos on a stick. All right. If you're watching on <laughs> live stream, you now have a picture on the screen there. It's, uh, nachos on a stick. What you have is the Milwaukee Brewers coming up with uh, an item on their menu now called Inside the Park Nachos. Inside the Park Nachos. All right, what yes. are these all about? It's a stick of beef covered in refried beans, rolled in Doritos, and then deep fried <laughs> to give it that crispy crunch. Then they drizzle sour cream and cheese oh, really? on top because otherwise it would be a travesty to call it a nacho. Yeah. I mean, you have to have that cheese and sour cream on top. Oh, so, I totally yeah. understand that, yeah. So, and they look like funky corn dogs yeah. with mustard and mayonnaise is what it looks like. So <laughs> but, re read it again. It's a stick of it's it, a slab it's, of beef. It's a stick of beef, stick covered, of beef. covered in refried beans, rolled in Doritos, oh, and then deep fried. Stick of beef covered in refried beans, correct? Yeah. yeah. Rolled in Doritos. Yeah. All right. Deep fried. Don't, deep fried. All right. Bring it up out of there, and then what do you do and with then it? Then you squirt sour cream and <laughs> cheese on top. Oh, gross! Out. <laughs> How much does this retail for if you buy it at the ballpark? Uh, let's see here. I don't think it says here. Let me look. Nacho uh, on a stick. How much would I have to throw down for that, you suppose? You know, I, I'm I'm guessing four or five bucks minimum. All right. So, um, huh, four or five bucks minimum. That's probably way too much to pay for that thing. So, stick of beef, deep fried, or no, put some, some uh, rolled in refried beans, 
covered in Doritos, deep fried. Yeah. Well, here's here's the thing too. The Brewers have got a couple other items they're, they're throwing on the menu too. They haven't got pictures of them, but you got down Wisconsin Avenue brat, yeah, <laughs> and the Miller Park brachos. Brachos. One is an 18 inch bratwurst covered in gravy, fries, and cheese curds. <laughs> and the other is a four slice four slices of sausage on a bed of kettle chips, jalapenos, and sauerkraut. That just sounds nasty. <laughs> But my boy, my boy Wyman's done sent me a text that says "yummy" and yeah. it was about seven m's cross through there. I got a couple other things we'll throw out there after yeah. a while. Nacho on a stick. All right, stick of beef, rolled and refried beans. That just that's it for me right there. Then, <laughs> then you cover it in Doritos and deep fried and come out of there and you squirt cream cheese and what and sour cream, sour cream and cheese on it. Cheese on it. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like a corn um, dog on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Woo! Yeah. That's Heartburn City right there. I still want a churro dog, though. Yeah. Down from uh, that was That's a, Arizona? Arizona. I think Phoenix, so. somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the Tom Taylor Sports Show being brought to you by Bracken Asphalt Maintenance right here on the scoreboard. We're seven. It'll be an eight today. We'll go five for five and get that off the board. Uh, Bracken Asphalt Maintenance and Paving, and he has been busy. Yesterday, my boys in Churchill and Kingsport. Today, I think he says he's going to be in Johnson City, Jonesboro. And I think maybe the two Bristols are giving quotes at 323-8726 is the number to call. Wells Fargo Financial Network, Bays Mountain Park, also brought to you by Max Medicine Mart. He'll join us coming up uh, this hour, our buddy Dr. Barry Walton from Max. Cherokee Barbershop, the Gator Man, home of the free haircut. We'll tell you about that. Larry Kaiser and Nationwide Insurance with a thought for the day. Book Lovers Warehouse in Johnson City. Breast Orthotics and Prosthetics. We'll tell you all about those folks coming up. Jim Klein, Farmers Insurance, the number one farmers insurance agent in five states. American Import and Auto Repair, home of the free loaner car program. And also by Bristol Motor Speedway. So here we go. Let's jump in and go uh, out of the Johnson City Press today. Here's a nice little story. Dave Hart, Tennessee Athletic Director Dave Hart, takes exception to suggestions that his department has ever interfered when athletes face discipline from campus officials. Now, there's a reason why this has come up. Former Vice Chancellor for Student Life, Tim Rogers, said the athletic department back in 13 pressured officials in charge of campus discipline to be lenient on student athletes in a memo obtained by the Tennessee newspaper. Rogers, who's mm. left his position, citing, quote, an intolerable situation. Obviously, they put a lot of heat on him as he left. Hart says absolutely no truth to this. Which school, means it was true. <laughs> Hart also said the school has increased its efforts to educate student athletes about sexual assault, alcohol, and drugs by bringing in guest speakers on these various topics. Now, he also, Athletic Director Hart, indicated, you brought this up the other day, has no regrets about the way he has handled the phasing out of the Lady Vols nickname for all women's sports other than basketball. He hasn't heard from the NCAA regarding a timetable on the investigation of men's basketball coach Donnie Tindall's tenure at Southern Miss. As we told you earlier in the week, Tennessee announced in November all women's teams are now going to be known as the Volunteers, would adopt the Power T logo used by the men's teams starting in 15-16, a move that coincides with the school switch to Nike as its apparel provider. Only Lady Vols is going to be the girls' basketball yeah. team yeah. or women's team. That move has drawn criticism. Of course including a protest before a Lady Vols basketball game back in December. It drew about 100 fans. They have a website called bringbacktheladyvols.com. That includes about 30 letters from former Lady Vols and three former Tennessee football players. Hart says he's met with all the women's coaches and teams beforehand in a high percentage, didn't say it was unanimous, high percentage of our people bought in from the outset. Well, buying in and agreeing are two different things. Well, it's the boss in the room. Yeah. He's signing their check. <laughs> what gonna, Hello. What are you going to say? He's signing their check. What are you going to say? No, I don't want to do this. He did acknowledge the move did not have unanimous approval. So, Of course. Anyway, Dave Hart says there's nothing to it. This guy who has left UT says there was something to it. Uh, he let him he got a hold of the official and said, cut these guys some slack. Kind of look the other way when our athletes get in trouble. In essence, what this says, when uh, to uh, here's a memo. I mean, they got a memo in writing. It says to be lenient on student athletes in a memo obtained by the Tennessee newspaper. Athletic department pressuring officials in charge of campus discipline to be lenient on student athletes in a memo obtained by the Tennessee newspaper. And the guy that I guess gave him the uh, memo or let him see it, no longer there. So, 
You draw your own conclusions. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah. Didn't he come from Alabama? Dave Hart? Yeah. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. enough said. <laughs> What's that got to do with anything? I mean, I, 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 just, I'm telling you, I, I, I haven't liked the guy since they hired him. All right. You know, I, I just, just, I just, there's something iffy about him, and it rubs me wrong, and <laughs> until, well, never mind. I, I, it, they put him on the list? It, yeah, you can put him on the list. All right. Up to I don't dislike UT. Sixteen. It's the AD. I don't. I don't care too much for Dave Hart. Yeah. UT AD now on the yeah. I don't like list. Can I run these down for you? <laughs> Just in case you forgot. Go right ahead. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Denny Hamlin, Jameis Winston, A Rod, Gino, uh, the lady Lady Huskies coach at UConn. You don't like Florida State at all. You don't like Tampa Bay at all. Uh, old comeback rock and roll artist. You don't like them. <laughs> Uh, school I didn't snow say I didn't days. like them. I don't like the fact that they're trying to make a comeback. School and snow days. Uh, Barry Bonds, Josh Hamilton. You don't like the sport of soccer. You don't like Mike Tyson. <laughs> you don't like Jimbo Fisher, Florida State's head coach. You yeah. don't like Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the National Football League. And now we add number 16, <laughs> Dave Hart, athletic director UT. So the list continues, continues to, to grow. grow. It's the Horace list. So there oh, you go. Mercy. Mm-hmm. Tom Dower Sports Show again on this Wednesday. It's hump day. Over the hump and through the woods to a wonderful weekend we go. One can only wonder. I noticed we didn't get any pictures today. So maybe Apester has told Tommy not to send the picture today. It is Wednesday with her little <laughs> happy hump day hat on. So I uh, didn't get a picture today. So I think maybe internally there was some suggestions. Are you going, are you going through withdrawals? No, I, I still pull up the one well, last week. you brought it up. I do miss I do miss her picture in the happy hump day. You're right. I'll go ahead and go out on record and say that. But it uh, would appear there was some, some internal, uh, how would you say it's negotiating? Don't send the picture to this week because I didn't get one unless it's popped up here right now. Well, but you still have them on your phone, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll have to. Bring if, it back if up. If we don't get any more, then we'll have to somehow get that off your phone so I can put it on the screen. Pull down the archives. Yeah. That would be good. We can do that. So, anyway, that's going on in, uh, in Knoxville. In Nashville, Titans, are they or are they not for sale? They say no. They're staying put. Who cares? All right, well, <laughs> I'll follow this team. So, you're I mean, right. I, yeah, the Tennessee Titans, uh, the year they went to the Super Bowl and lost to the Rams, was it the Rams? Yes. Yeah. The, ever since then, they've been on a slow slide downwards. And, of course, you got to hit bottom before you can come back up, I guess. Um, but um, when Fisher left, things just have not gone well. No. And, I, you know, I don't follow them anymore. No. I mean, there's nothing there to watch. Well, it's interesting when they were, as you said, on the roll, when they were rocking and rolling yeah. and having some good seasons. Of course, there was a lot of interest, a lot of buzz. But you go into a sporting goods store now and try and find something Titans to buy. Nothing there. Ain't no way. Don't, I mean, I never see any stuff anymore from the Titans. So, anyway, the gentleman who is in search for the new president and CEO says they've made it clear the NFL franchise is not for sale. Uh, Steve Underwood said rumors of a team being sold are heard whenever a longtime owner dies. Of course, Bud Adams passed away yeah. in October 2013. Tommy Smith announcing his retirement last Friday, raising new questions about whether Adams' family was preparing to sell the team that he founded. So uh, Titans ownership right now is two daughters and, a, uh, and the family of his late son are the controlling interest for the Tennessee Titan football franchise. So he says, again, Steve Underwood is a gentleman who's the interim president and CEO He's in charge of searching for a new president and CEO says they're not for sale. And I'm like you outside of Nashville. And I, I know there's people like him, but I think they're kind of casual Titans fans. If they're hot, yeah, we'll pay attention to them. But, uh, again, you go out someplace in your travels next four or five days, go somewhere and ask him, hey, you got anything Titans? Nothing there. Nothing. In fact, when I went to the sporting goods store at one of the malls there recently, uh cowboys obviously for jason Witten, mm-hmm. a lot of Steelers stuff uh some patriot stuff uh, not much raiders don't stuff. say i dig hard for nah, that didn't you no nah, raiders were <laughs> nowhere to be found shot glasses yeah not even that <laughs> they didn't have anything with the raiders because i asked because you got anything of the raiders who and and the lady asked me said she said you mean you talking about sullivan north i said no, no. I'm talking about the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> no. That's bad. <laughs> oh, she said, Solomon no. Solomon North. And I said, Solomon North Raiders? I said, no, ma'am, I'm talking about the Oakland Raiders. Oh, no, we don't know yeah, them. No. <laughs> <laughs> and she muttered and walked off. <laughs> yep. So, anyway, uh, Titans are not for sale, they're saying. So, we'll see. Uh, sometimes those things change. College football against the Tom Taylor uh, Sports Show. Again, 
here on this Wednesday. And we've got coming up, we'll check in with the Quiz Show kids. That would be Mr. Wyman and the Apester. Again, from Bracken Asphalt Maintenance, they'll do the quiz show again this week, see if we can go five for five. Last week I was a dismal, what, one or two for five? One, in, one for five, one big for guy. five last week. Oh, and then, of course, I'm still catching flack over yesterday's faux pas, so <laughs> that was good stuff. <sighs> Where's Davy Crockett born? Tom? Yeah, uh, Tennessee. Oh. Went out to dinner with some folks last night, and I was telling them about that, and they, they looked at me like, and Lance said, well, David Crocker birthplace <laughs> right down the road. the road. I said, I know that. I know that. I'm fully aware of that. I said, a horse got all over me. I said, uh, Kent Archer got all over me. I said, I got that. I said, I was thinking Alamo, Texas. He, but he said, he just shook his head like, it's just right down the road. Said, okay. I feel like even a bigger idiot. Thank you very much. So uh, we'll do the quiz show coming up in a few minutes. Dr. Barry Walton from Max Meadows Smart. Also, Greg Salyer, our weekly Reds report. Reds are 500, man. I'm not excited. So he, I'm kind of like folks around here about the Titans. I mean, it's like, come on, you're nine and nine spring training, but they're not over. But they're nine for nine. I want to be eighteen and zero. I want to go into the. I don't want to start the regular season. I said again, limping into the season. I, I said, want to be strong. Give it seven games, one week into the season, seven games or ten games somewhere around there, and see what the record is. And that's a good indication after they've gone through the rotation and 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 see how the players are feeling themselves out, how they how they're going to be. I conducting can, themselves on the field, you'll get a better feel and grasp for how the season's going to progress. Yeah, that's going to go because they open up the Pirates and the Cardinals, and the Cardinals own them. They could play the uh-huh. Cardinals. They could go out here at the East Tennessee State on the Dome uh, or Freedom Hall parking lot, and the Cardinals beat them. I'm Wherever go- you take them. I'll tell you what, I am going out on a limb, and I'm going to say Cincinnati will take two out of three against the Cardinals. At first series? First series. All right, you're on. <laughs> You're on. Not, I because I, not because I like Side it. bet, lunch bet. You're on, baby. Because I, I, I'm now a Cincinnati fan. Oh, I am too. And I'm going to root for them if you don't. <laughs> uh, I'm just not excited about them. So, I should be, but I'm not. It's like, you yeah. You pick another team then. Well, I've I've contemplated that. But if you look around the homestead here, uh, same with the Raiders. I was oh, looking okay. at Okay, well, see, you, you're a diehard Raiders fan. Yeah. So, what's the matter? Why aren't you a diehard Reds fan? Just not excited about it. Just don't have a, just don't have any energy. No buzz about the Reds. It's like, ah, it's Joey Votto again and Jay Bruce, and they've not made any big changes to get well, better. Well, there's no that's the same thing you can say about the Raiders. Oh no, they, the Raiders. Uh, no, no. <laughs> they went out and spent almost sixty million dollars buying and getting free agents. They do that every year, and what happens? <laughs> 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 why, no do I, why do I get into this with you? I lose every time. <laughs> but the Reds didn't go get anybody. They, I mean, there's no big names they went and got. It's the same bunch of guys that underperformed last year. So, why? you know, what's the old saying? If you don't do anything different, you'll get the same results. Well, they basically got the same team. I'm anxious to see what Greg has to say about this. Well, I'll be all over him that we woefully underperformed last year, and we haven't uh-huh. done anything to get better. We went and got Marlon Bird. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> Wait a minute. Watch this. Heart be still. Marlon Bird. Okay. Is that going to be a franchise changer? No, he won't be. So, I'm just not, you know, Quato's took off. He's been gone four or five days for some uh, family issue, which I understand. But, you know, he's out of the rotation. And, I mean, he may be back. He's been gone. He had to go back to his native country, and uh, which doesn't mean they're going to be having a good season. Not. It's just there is no umph. I don't have any umph on this yeah. team. Okay, so payday versus Reese's Cup, right? Uh, whatever you want to put down, I'm going to take this one. <laughs> You're telling me this first series, which will be in Cincinnati, is like the first weekend, so two weekends from now, yeah. uh, Cardinals come to Cincinnati. You're saying the Reds will take two out of three. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> whatever you want to pick, whatever food bet you want, I feel real good about this one. I feel better about this one than this stupid bracket thing. Yes, I'll do that one. I'm in. Pick the food bet. I said payday versus Reese's Cup. Uh, whatever you want to do, Cardinals will take two out of three from the Reds. In All fact, right. they may even sweep them. Because when the, Reds, when the Cardinals come to town, the Reds, go, they just fold. They just feel like a bunch of ninnies. All right. <laughs> Got that out of my system. All righty. We're going to take a break. Come right back. We've got uh, college football, Ohio State. Uh, Again, a quarterback dilemma there in Columbus. Virginia Tech cracking up their spring football season. And also we've got uh, some notes out of uh, Knoxville, the Tennessee football spring practice underway as well. Of course, the Bucs. We'll be uh, checking in on Friday with our buddy Michael Michael White. He'll be giving us a Buck football update on Friday for the Buccaneers of Coach Carl Torbush. And so we'll take a little de- little dive into college football coming up next here on this edition of the Tom Taylor Sports Show. It's not just a race. It's the place. 
a place to set up a tent, park the RV, and start emptying the cooler. A place to fire up the grill in the Tennessee hills and take in the best short track racing in NASCAR. The place is the last great Coliseum, Bristol Motor Speedway. Hope you'll join us on April 19th for the Food City Five. Call 423-BRISTOL or visit bristoltix.com. It's not just a place. It's Bristol, baby! From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles, to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at brackenpaving.com. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. It's easy to buy insurance and forget about it. But the more you learn about your coverage, the more gaps you might find. Like how you thought you were covered for this. Check it out, Mom. When you're really only covered for this. Or how you figured you're covered for this when you're actually paying for this. You might be surprised at what's hiding in your coverage. Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. See what might be hiding in your coverage at farmers.com slash gaps. <laughs> Arguing over the Cincinnati Reds over here. <laughs> Not loose, loose touch. The man would argue with the stop sign, I'm telling you. He would argue with the stop sign. I love it. I said, Pirates in up. No, Diamondbacks. No, the Blue Jays. That's enough spring training. No, it, no, it's not. Oh, yeah, it's in gray. It, the schedule's in gray. It means spring training. Said, yes. Pirates, and then they have the Cardinals coming to town that first weekend. And 10th, what did you say, 10th, 11th, and 12th? Yeah, back-to-back yeah. weekends yeah. with St. Louis. In Cincinnati the first weekend, and the, our race weekend here at Bristol will be in St. Louis that second weekend. So there you have it. So we got the lunch bet on. I'm I, going. I, payday versus Reese's Cup. Well, you don't want to do lunch bet? You just want to do a candy bet? What? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a, I, see, I, what I'm thinking is. You're going to lose. There, no, there's that's the, what you're thinking. Now, we've, we've already got one dinner bet. On, okay. on the bracket. That's covered. My, my guess is there's going to be more uh, wagers when involving food as we go through this show. So I've got to. But know, that one's I've covered. I've got to take Jim, care of my wallet. Jim Klein Farmers Insurance got that one covered with, at Braden's <laughs> Barbecues. That one's. Either way, we can't go wrong on that deal. Because <laughs> that's a $25 gift certificate. So uh, all I'm going to do is go in and pay, or you're going to go in and pay. So that one's covered. So that's a free bow. So let's go back to. let's let's Cracker ramp. Barrel. Let's ramp the stakes up a little bit. Cracker Barrel. All right. That sounds better. Cracker Barrel. <laughs> lunch at the Barrel. All right. And the lunch bet, once again, let's put it out there on the table. Uh, the first weekend, the Reds and the Cardinals play the 10th, 11th, and 12th. You say Cincinnati. the Reds are going to take two out of three. Yes. Or sweep. Yes. They're going to win the series out of the three-game set. Yes. Either way they do it. I say, no way, Jose. And I'm the Reds fan. I bet they get my own team. But I feel like Pete Rose. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Boom. But anyway, we'll do a Barrel lunch bet. All right, let's see what's going on in the world of uh, Ohio State problems there. Again, a happy problem. Loaded quarterback competition. Hasn't really even started yet at Ohio State. And already the strain is starting to show on Urban Meyer. How do you get strain? Well, you got three great quarterbacks. J.T. Barrett, Braxton Miller, the guy got hurt right before the season started last year. Yep. He was on the shelf the whole season. And then the guy that led him to the national championship, Cardell Jones, the only healthy option in spring ball. But still, he says, come regular season time, He's not excited about the fact he'll have to look down the sideline and see two very talented quarterbacks standing there. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't. He's upset about. He's not upset, but he says it's uh, starting to eat at me a little bit. Well, I mean, I guess that's a good problem to have if you know your quarterback oh. goes down. You got someone just as good to go right in there. Well, absolutely, that's what you want. Yeah, the platoon system. Meyer's been watching them all three during the practices and. Again, each are participating in a different level in workouts. So the relationship with one another appears to add to Myers' difficulty and eventually establishing a pecking order 
So he says they all get along. They like each other. I'm thinking, but this is what you want as a coach. So, I mean, it's a happy problem to have. And I understand his concern because these guys are all competitors. They want to be out there and be the starting quarterback for the defending national champion. But uh, you can only have one. And so, anyway, uh, Urban Meyer sits eating at him because he can't make a decision who's going to be a starting quarterback. Is there any rule that says you have to establish a starting quarterback now for the fall? I mean, can't you just wait till fall practice? Well, I mean, well, I think you need to have a plan in place. Yeah. And that comes out of spring training. So, um, going into the fall, then you know who's who's your front runner. I mean, anything can happen. I mean, you know, you have someone get hurt. I mean, I, I think it's premature to be whining about a problem. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could be down at UT and have, what, nine guys on the shelf, not even practicing. That's right. Getting ready for the fall. And so, he's got three quarterbacks you can't choose from, and he's eating at him, I'm thinking. Really, Urban? So, Anyway, I mean, it's a happy problem to have, and I understand his compassion for these guys because he's right. They're all competitors, and they all want to be the starting quarterback, as I said, for the defending national championship team. But, you know, again, as you said, happy problem to have. Up in Blacksburg, 29th spring season, ready for Frank Beamer, ready to go for the Hokies of Virginia Tech. Opened their 29th spring practice with him yesterday, uh, not quite four months after throat surgery. And so he's let a lot of his staff handle a lot of day-to-day operations and until he got back in the in the swing of things. Of course, the Hokies coming off a 7-6 and six season. Beamer, who's 230 victories, lead all active coaches at the FBS level, also expressed a lot of gratitude for all those that showed their support during his recovery. So uh, Frank Beamer and the Hokies uh, getting ready to get cranked up. Of course, a year from now they're going to be playing Tennessee at the Battle of Bristol, and ticket sales there are very, very brisk for that for the season tickets, for the race to get into the running to get those tickets. So, uh, have you ever been to Lane Stadium to see a game? Blacksburg? No, never been there. Yeah. Are you a Hokies fan? No. Okay. Don't like them? I think they're a bunch of uh, arrogant fans, arrogant players, arrogant everything. They, they think, well, yeah. just Virginia Tech, number 17. <laughs> I saw that one coming way down the track. <laughs> Headlight, there it comes. So I mean, what is a hokey anyways? <laughs> well, it's a gobbler. Used to they used to be VPI gobblers. Well, now the Virginia Tech it. Hokies. So so you're not a you're not a hokey fan. No. Okay. All right. So uh, they are starting their 29th spring practice with the man in charge, the most active wins coach in the FBS, 230 victories. So Frank Beamer and the folks will be uh, going through the paces. Yeah, in but Blacksburg. they always lose the big one. <laughs> That would be Horace, H O R A C E, for all questions or comments. If you want to, <laughs> man, you're on a roll. You smoked two today. We even, we're not even in a half hour into the show. Dave Hart, the UT athletic director, he's on his bad list. And now Virginia Tech football, or just Virginia Tech as a as a school as a program. Uh, well, yeah, more football than anything, okay. Yeah. Let me just go back and yeah. put Virginia Tech football. There you go. Yeah. F T B L A. Shortened for football. Didn't like the Hokies. All right. There we go. All right. <laughs> Let me tell you about our, uh, our good friends at Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics. Again, they're located with four locations. And, again, this is the time of year folks out there be bopping around and get hurt and get uh, get a catch or, uh, as we said yesterday, a hitch in your giddy-up. 39 years, four locations, one family at Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics in Kingsport on Broad Street and Bristol Highway 126 right now from Still Creek Park in Greenville, Justice Drive, Pounding Mill, Virginia on Short Street. Again, their phone number, easy to remember, 1-800-524-4447. 1-800-524-4447 is the number to call. And, again, if you have, uh, if you come up with a, a situation that would need a, a uh, splint. They've got those uh, braces. They make them. They custom make a lot of the braces to fit your needs because, for example, you wouldn't be the same size as me and, and vice versa. So spinal bracing, they both pre-made and custom designed. Uh, they have wrist and ankle splints, knee sleeves, rehab bracing. If getting back after an injury or surgery, they have all that available for you. Again, they're a phone call away. Again, there's four places you can go sit down and talk to Will Graybill and the great staff at Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics. If you need a brace it or replace it from head to toe, you know where to go. 39 years, four locations, one family at Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics at 1-800-524-4447 is the number to call. So bring me up to speed here on the Tennessee football spring practice. 
You ask, I can do that. <laughs> hey, Tom, bring me up to speed on spring practice at UT. Thank you, horse. Okay. Uh, they are putting a lot of stock in Joshua Dobbs, the quarterback. Only scholarship quarterback returning from last year's team, Nathan Peterman, of course, transferred to Pittsburgh. Backup quarterback, he's gone. Uh, Riley Ferguson from two years ago, he's gone. So All they got left is one. Peterman's transfer to Pittsburgh leaves three freshmen competing for the right to back up Dobbs. will be a junior this fall. Hmm. See, I'm that I'm not I don't feel good about that. You got three freshmen, true freshmen. <clears throat> I got no issues with Dobbs. Okay. Yeah. Well, and Dobbs in, in you know, wasn't he a redshirt freshman? I have no clue. Uh well I got no problem with Dobbs being being behind the center. Mm-hmm. Uh as far as you know, his backup, they've got some work to do. Quentin Dormady, Jawan Jenkins, both enrolled in January, are participating in spring practice. Sharon, S-H-E-R, Sharon, Sharon, Sharon Jones will join them this summer. S-H-E-R-I-R-O-N. Sharon, that doesn't sound right, but Sharon Jones will join them this summer. As they have, bottom line is they've got Dobbs and they've got three freshman quarterback. That's it. Mm-hmm. Everybody else is gone. Peterman's gone. Ferguson's gone. So, only one they got is Dobbs and the three freshman quarterbacks. So, well, you know, I, I got nothing against a freshman, you know, quarterback in the team. I mean, they've had freshman quarterback UT before. Uh, you've got uh, outstanding freshmen that have taken teams to the uh, national championship before in different in different venues. But um, I, I I think it's too it's premature still to be worrying about it. I had a guy tell me the other day, he said, for all the accolades Peyton Manning got, and he did as a quarterback at Tennessee, one thing he doesn't have that T. Martin has is a national Champ. championship ring. Yep. And he said, say what you want, but proofs in the performance. He said, Manning may be the face of Tennessee football over the last 10, 15 years, but he said the man who got him a ring was T. Martin. I said, well. Well, in, in defense of Peyton Manning, though, I would say Peyton Manning, when he played, uh, it was a one-man show in, in – most regards. I mean, he brought that team to where it was. When T. Martin was behind the center, it wasn't because he was an outstanding quarterback. It was because he had great team play. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> but the old boy said, "End of the day, the only one's got that ring." I know it. I know it's it. T. Martin. Yeah, I but said, look yep. where he's at today, and he's making millions. Where's T. Martin? <laughs> I don't know. Polishing his ring. I, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> he's out of pro football, and I'm oh, sure. Oh yeah, didn't even make it. I mean, I mean, he tried, but. Yeah, he didn't have a whole lot of success nah, in the nah. pros. But anyway, this guy said, "Man, talk. You say what you want about Tennessee football and and Peyton, and he's not, he was knocking him. He just said, hey, at the end of the day, the guy that got the the ring at the national championship with his, the cast he had on that particular team was T. Martin. So and and, and like I said, it, it's a team sport. <laughs> it's a team sport. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when it's Wednesdays and full moon, you are just raw <laughs> sandpaper. I love it. So we'll take a quick break. We've got a quiz show coming up next here. We're going to go five for five, get this out of the way, and move on as we're getting ready to uh, stump the question askers. That'll be Tommy Wyman and the apester from Bracken Paving. We'll do that coming up next right here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. At Farmers, we make you smarter about your insurance because what you don't know can hurt you. What if you didn't know that home insurance can keep your stuff covered even when it's not at home? or that collisions with wildlife on the road may not be covered. And what if you didn't know you could be liable for any accidents on your property? The more you know, the better you can plan for what's ahead. Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Your life is always changing. You never know what shape it will take or how your financial needs might change. But if we talk about your investments and how they can provide for you and your family, the future becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today. It's not just a race, it's the place. A place to set up a tent, park the RV, and start emptying the coop. A place to fire up the grill in the Tennessee Hills and take in the best short track racing in NASCAR. The place is the last great Coliseum, Bristol Motor Speedway. Hope you'll join us on April 19th for the Food City Five. Call 423-BRISTOL or visit bristoltix.com. It's not just a place. It's Bristol, baby! 
At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. Hey, Diet Mountain Dew driver Dale Earnhardt Jr. here. On April 19th, I'll be racing at Bristol Motor Speedway in the Food City 500. Tickets start at just $64, so call 423-BRISTOL or visit bristoltix.com today to see me and my Diet Mountain Dew team in Bristol. It's Bristol, baby. And we're back with the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Is it there? It is. Can you see it? Can you see her today and her uh, happy hump day? Uh, get that up a little close. Good afternoon, Tommy Wyman. How are you, my friend? Oh, just dandy. How about yourself? Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's glaring. It's hard to get a good shot. Looking at the picture of the apes and her happy hump day. Turn it, turn it a little bit to the side. There we're trying go. to. It's, it's just no, not that way, the other way. <laughs> 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 Nothing like live coaching with a live stream. There we That's go. Good. There we go. There got we go. it? No, yeah. Still got the glare. You got to turn it a little bit. I got it real close here. It'll come in here in a second. Maybe her radiance is so sweet that it just creates a glare with her little smile. It's got to be. We'll have to take another picture and send you a new hump day photo for next week. All right. Did you say she had her comfy pants there on today? Is. Oh, yeah. She's got the comfy pants on. Comfy pants and oh, her. There's the picture. Yeah. And her tiger shoes, is what you said? She's got her leopard print shoes on today. Her <laughs> leopard <laughs> Her <laughs> leopard print shoes. Oh, yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that nice? Good afternoon, yep. sir. How are you? Oh, just. Dandy, ready to roll, baby. All right, let's see. Let me ask you, since we last talked, Kentucky Wildcats, uh, I thought they struggled against Cincinnati. Your team, uh, they're going to be okay going into this next round? Uh, what they get, did against Cincinnati, Tom, is what they've been doing all year long. They play the half uh, close. Uh, you know, all the games are close, and when you get to the 10-minute mark in the second half, that's usually when they start wearing them down and they and they have a run, and it kind of puts them out. There you go. And they've got uh, – who they got coming up next? West Virginia? West Virginia and uh, Bobby Huggins' team beat them when they had his first Cal's first year there uh, when they had John Wall and uh, DeMarcus Cousins. So you nervous about this or not? You know what, Tom? We're going to give our best effort. The other team's going to give their best effort, and whatever happens, happens. There you go. I like how you uh, – It's just sports. It is what it is. It is. It's one spoke in the big wheel of life. So, again, you're exactly right. Now, you were telling me that uh, your thoughts on the Lady Vols, that whole thing – you don't agree with them. Tell me about that. Oh, it's ridiculous. Come on. <laughs> I mean, I've always known them as the Lady Vols. I mean, growing up, I, I have to love Pat Summit. That was the one team of Tennessee I like is the Lady Vols. And I, I, why would you change that name? It's just branded out there and just have it all as, I don't know. It just it makes no sense. You think Nike had anything to do with it since they're the new apparel provider at UT? Oh, I'm sure it had to do something, but I don't know why they would because – They'd sell twice as much stuff with regular Vols and then Lady Vols on it, you would think. Yeah, so the Lady Vols can stay on basketball. All the other women's sports will just be volunteers. That's what they're saying. So Yeah, and it makes no sense. I mean, I, I, I like the branding of Lady Vols and, and the Vols. There you go. So they uh, apparently Dave Hart, the athletic director, catches some heat over it. and so, But he's not going to change his mind. He said it's going to stay. So it is that which it is my friend so ready for the quiz show let's hit that music we're going to play today and we've got a our buddy we're going to go for one of our facebook friends ron bedford out of kingsport we're going to play for him today i love it do we need to apologize to him right now (laughs) (laughs) oh well you heard what i did yesterday the old i heard that tom i was sitting here listening to it I was dying. April was behind her desk in the fetal position, cracking up on that one. <laughs> I kept thinking of Alamo. I kept thinking of Texas on Davy Crockett. And then, as my buddy said last night at dinner, he said, Tom, his birthplace is 10 miles down the road. I said, I know that. And the horse said, he was born down there in Telford. I know that. So You'll never forget it. No, I will not ever forget that. You're right. All right, let's roll the dice here for Ron Bedford, see if we can get him a win. Playing for a free oil change from American Import and Auto Repair, home of the free loaner car program, a free haircut from Cherokee Barbershop, and a free day's passes, multiple day passes, for everybody in the family to go to Bays Mountain Park. And so all that is L free. All you got to do is go five for five, I do. And so here we go. Question number one. Number one, true and false, or false. 
Elvis was the first entertainer to introduce karate in an American movie. True. Yes, it is. Do you know what the movie is? Uh, no. Flamingo Star in 1960. All right. There we go. One off on a roll already. <laughs> <laughs> At least I got one right. I'm not going over. Number two. Question two, true or false. There was a Broadway show based on his work called All Shook Up. Broadway show based on his work called All Shook Up. That would be true. That is true. Oh, uh, I'm feeling it now for Ron Bedford. Number three. <laughs> All right. Elvis is the only solo performer to have been inducted into the Rock and Roll, Country, and Gospel Halls of Fame. Elvis, the only solo artist to be in the Rock and Roll, Gospel, and Country Music Hall of Fame. All three of them. You said the only solo artist, is that the correct? The only solo performer. To be in all three. Uh, let me think here. I'm thinking that's not going to be right. Let me think. Country Music Hall of Fame, Rock and Roll, and Gospel Hall of Fame, only solo artist. Uh, let me think here. Scanning, scanning, scanning. Uh, that's false. That is true. I got it right? Uh, no, that is false. I mean, it is true. He is the only performer to be in the Rock and Roll Country and Gospel Halls of Fame. But may I say to you, Tommy, that was a stupid question. All right, let's go to number four. Of course it was a stupid question. You got it wrong. All right, number four. Okay, this one's going to be a good one for you. You should know this one by heart. Okay. Winner of the 2014 Ultimate Elvis Tribute Artist Contest held in Memphis was Jay Dupuis. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a big false. That is a big true. No. <laughs> I thought it was that slaughter guy she likes. No, it's not. That she knew that would get you. She <laughs> knew that one would get you. You'd be thinking about uh, those guys. That is stupid question number two today. Okay, all Let's right. Let's which side of the fence he jumps on now. Yeah. <laughs> all right, here, here's the here's the rubber question. All right, here we number go. Number five, uh, true or false? Yes. His 1977 country hit "Way Down" Way on was down. the number one song on Billboard magazine's country singles chart the week of Elvis's death. Way on down was the number one. That would be false. That would be true. <laughs> Tom, she's sitting there going, yes, pumping her arms because you got these wrong. A stupid uh, question two number three. Two okay. for okay. Bearded, I'm telling you. Stupid questions, three of them today. Okay. <laughs> you started out so well. <laughs> yes, and the, and the wheels flew off. There you go. Now, I think it's only fair that at some point very soon we get her on. Let me ask her some Elvis questions. I think that's only fair. Not Tom, you. You know what? I've been trying for her to talk on the radio, and she refuses to do it. Yeah. Well. So I'll have to work on that. This isn't the radio. For her, exactly. For her to team it, to chime in <laughs> on public humiliation of me, I should have a chance to have a rebuttal and to ask her the questions one day. I'll work on it, Tom. I'll work on it for you. See what we can come up with. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Tell me where you're going to be tomorrow. I'm giving quotes to folks. I'm going to be actually, today I was in Bristol, uh, Tennessee and Virginia, t and Bluntville and Piney Flats. Tomorrow I'm going to be in Irwin, Jonesboro, and Johnson City, and I think Limestone. 323-8726. So as, as everybody cranked back up, you got everything asphalt back up and running? Oh, yeah. We're, ro we're rolling, just anticipating the cold weather on Friday again, of course. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, it's only going to be for a day or two. It's not going to be nine below. It's not going to be snow. So That's it. Short-lived, and we're back to it again. You got it. All right. Well, tell April, thank you for three more dumb questions that <laughs> I should have gotten. So, you know, when I don't get them right, they're stupid questions. You know that, right? <laughs> of course we know that. <laughs> <laughs> so there's three more stupid questions today. He was the only, uh, that, I didn't know that, the only single artist to be in the country music, rock and roll, and gospel hall of fame. Did not know that. All right. Yep. Very good. Tommy, thank you, my friend. You guys are awesome. Thank you for being with us on the show, and we'll talk to you soon. Go Cats. You got it. Thanks, man. Have a good one. All right. Good man right there. <laughs> stupid questions, I'm telling you. They were stupid, stupid, stupid. All right. So. <laughs> uh, I love this part of it. Yes, I know you do. So, and it's not getting any better. I keep no. I'm, I'm, I'm hanging around down to those one and twos now. I'm laboring a little bit. So. Uh, we are 
<sighs> Looking for a better one tomorrow. Let's see. We'll hope for best tomorrow with the buzzer and see how that goes on our Thursday edition of the show. Uh, college baseball from yesterday, East Tennessee State. Walk-off home run in the 10th inning on the road at Radford, and Radford wins it 7-4 to four in a three-run shot off of Peyton Taylor. Bucks are 11-11, and 11, and so the Buccaneers of Tony Skull losing that game. Gosh, it'd be a heartbreaker. Bottom of the 10th on the road at Radford, and guy lights him up for a three-run tater to win it 7-4, to four. so tough break there. Then you have the uh, Tennessee softball team had a perfect game. Aaron Wow. Aaron Gabriel, perfect game against East Tennessee State. Beat them 10 nothing in women's softball. And 13th time in the history of the school, there's been a perfect game thrown. And so Aaron Gabriel did that yesterday for the Lady Vols, 10 nothing over the Lady Buccaneers in college softball. So there you go. It's, uh, uh, that's, that's pretty strong there to do a perfect game in anything, let alone softball. So, And then not that softball is bad. It's just that's tough. That's tough. Yep. Tough way to go and a tough tough thing to do, obviously. Have you ever stood in, in the batter's box and let a uh, college no. pitcher no. softball throw one in there? No. You know how big the diamonds are. Oh, yeah. Same size as Little League. That's how far the mound is away from the home plate. And that ball comes in there, buddy. They're bringing it. Oh, yeah. Got a little smoke to it, too, right? Oh, yeah. Got a little, a little. I don't care how big a softball is. It's, it's hard to hit. Yeah. And they put a little spin on it, too, don't they? have a little, well, they, uh, little yeah, movement, well, as yeah. they say? Yeah, they put movement on it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I also say keeping them girls' arms or ladies' arms keep from falling off because the way well, they windmill things well, got to hurt. Well, that actually, that's why they can pitch day after day after day. There's less stress on your shoulder coming from underneath than it is from coming over the top. Huh. Didn't know that. Yeah. Learn things from horse. Physics. <laughs> <laughs> Says the man who sent an egg <laughs> on the side every year in the, uh, what was the spring equinox? There you go. Yeah. Every year he's out there with an egg going, <laughs> okay, here we go. So, yep. Physics, so it's easier to go underhand, yeah. uh, slow pit or fast pitch softball than it is yeah. uh, overhand pitching yes. a baseball. Yes. Huh. The size of the ball doesn't anything to do no. with it. No. Just it's all in the. It's in the mechanics of coming over the top versus coming underneath. Physics. All right. Before we go to the break, got Dr. Barry Walton coming up next year. Let me run down what happened last night. At the NIT Murray State, who was mad because they didn't get into the NCAA. And one of the teams still left. Last night, Miami beat the Richmond Spiders. Stanford beat Vanderbilt in the NIT. Today, you have Murray State at Old Dominion and Louisiana Tech against Temple. Temple's nickname are or is? Owls. A, Temple whoa. Owls. Oh, Murray State is? You'll never get this. <laughs> Murray State. Mm-hmm. Starts with an R. Mm-hmm. Nah, it's not Raiders. Maybe, oh, maybe man, I've got you thinking. I got him. I've got him thinking. <laughs> thinking Raiders. No, it's not Raiders. Uh, racers. Racers. I never got that one. Oh, yeah. What is a racer, anyways? Murray State at Old Dominion. Their nickname is? Starts with an M. Old Dominion? Mm-hmm. You'll never get this one either. No, I don't know. Monarchs. Monarchs. Okay. There you go. Louisiana Tech at Temple tonight. Men's College Hoops in the NIT. Uh, then you have the CBI. As I told you, if you're breathing and you're – you know, I mean, you got the March Madness NIT now, the CBI. Tonight, Seattle at Loyola of Chicago and Vermont at Louisiana Monroe. Those are biggies. Boy, I'm going to wait. Can't, I'm bated <laughs> breath to find out who wins those games. We can probably watch them tonight. I'm sure they're going to be on TV. Yeah, where? Uh, actually, they're not going to be. No, just the NIT will be on tonight. So, no, nah, they won't be on. Seattle. Some Japanese guy will have his satellite dish set up. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find it. <laughs> High school baseball going to the break. Yesterday it was South over Gate City, 12 to 2 and 5. Daniel Boomby volunteer 3-2. Science will be Tennessee I 1 nothing. Crockett Red Hot baseball team. They beat Dobbins Minute 7 to 4. Sullivan East over Sullivan North 10 nothing. Morristown West beat Cherokee 7 to 4. Greenville over West Green 6 to 1. You have Unicoi County defeating Happy Valley 7 to 5 and Morristown East beat Jeff County 6 to 4 in saw in baseball and softball. Volunteer blanking Dobbins minute six nothing. Cherokees ladies over Jeff County six to five. And Daniel Boone defeating Solomon Central ten to six in girls softball. Greenville's Lady Green Devils over West Green. Elizabethan's Lady Cyclones defeat Johnson County three to one. And Science Hills Lady Hilltoppers defeat Tennessee High seven nothing. And then Gate City over GI Burton in Southwest Virginia softball. Uh, it was 11 to one and five. Abington beat Holston twelve to two and five. Rye Coves Lady War Eagles beat Hayside nine to one. 
and Union over Castlewood, and that goes to the tune of 7-5. to five. That's softball from yesterday. We'll run down today's schedule coming up in a few minutes. Dr. Barry Walton joins us coming up next as we are working our way through this Wednesday on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at brackenpaving.com. At Farmers, we make you smarter about insurance. Because what you don't know can hurt you. What if you didn't know that it's smart to replace washing machine hoses every five years? What if you didn't know that you might need extra coverage for more expensive items? And what if you didn't know that teen drivers are four times more likely to get into an accident? So, The more you know, the better you can plan for what's ahead. Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Your life is always changing. You never know what shape it will take or how your financial needs might change. But if we talk about your investments and how they can provide for you and your family, the future becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today. It's not just a race, it's the place. A place to set up a tent, park the RV, and start emptying the coop. A place to fire up the grill in the Tennessee Hills and take in the best short track racing in NASCAR. The place is the last great Coliseum, Bristol Motor Speedway. Hope you'll join us on April 19th for the Food City Five. Call 423-BRISTOL or visit bristoltix.com. It's not just a place. It's Bristol, baby! Back on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Thanks for being with us on this Wednesday. It's hump day over the hump through the woods to a great weekend we're going to. No question about that. Every day is a good day, and we want to get right to the ponies there. Our buddy, Dr. Barry Walton from Max Medicine Market. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Doing very well, Tom Taylor. How are you doing this afternoon? Just fine, sir. Just fine. Is your bracket blown all to pieces, or are you doing pretty good right now? <laughs> I'm about half. There you go. <laughs> half good or half bad? Yeah. Or just half? About 50%. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you think anybody's got anything for Kentucky? I don't think so. Like, no. you know, it's the, only, the only people that's going to beat Kentucky is Kentucky. So uh, if they play their game, nobody can stay close to them. But if they, uh, if they dog it, you know, they'll get beat. There you go. Which is the, the beauty of uh, having your career uh, based on the actions of 19, 20, and 21-year-olds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well put. Well put. So, anyway, it picks back up again tomorrow with more college hoops, and we'll talk all about that tomorrow, of course, we get into more regional play. Let's jump in and talk about weekend warriors. Weather's been great. Folks outside working, mowing, trimming trees, planting flowers, and they get a little hitching or giddy up or get a little problem here, get a little problem there. you got some creams to kind of help some sore muscles. Tell us about that. Tom, we do. We have just a fantastic assortment of creams for uh, muscle aches. Uh, you know, sometimes people will get a, a strain of, of a muscle, and usually the, the recommendations for that, or if it's a, even a joint like an ankle, uh, it's real easy to be out there in the yard and uh, maybe a critter or something has done something in the yard that you didn't see, and you can roll an ankle pretty easily. Uh, but usually the recommendation is the first 48 hours or so to use ice. And you can also use uh, ointments or creams or roll-ons even that we have, uh, things like Biofreeze. Uh, that uh, do a, a chemical form of, of coldness, and that can help shrink the inflammation. Now, after that first 48 hours, they usually go to the recommendation of heat. So basically what we're doing is that in that first 48 hours, we're trying to sh uh, limit the flow of blood to that area because usually when you get that flow of blood in there after an injury like that, uh, the body's reaction is to carry lots of fluid in there to help you heal up and uh, that's just where the swelling comes from. So we try to limit it the first 48 hours by putting uh, cold on there to shrink the blood vessels. 
after those first uh, 48 hours, then we go with heat. And the idea on that is to expand the blood vessels so that the, the blood can come in and take away all the damaged uh, tissue, uh, all the damaged uh, chemicals that your body has produced, uh, the toxins basically, and move them on out. So that's the theory of using cold the first 48 hours and heat after that. We have a multitude of creams. We've got, of course, the traditional sports creams. And there's lots of things that uh, have trolamine in it. Uh, that's been used for years and years. Uh, brand names you might be familiar with on that was Myoflex, uh, which has been uh, very difficult to get lately. So, uh, But it's uh, same ingredient, 10% as in sports cream, same ingredient as in asper cream. So uh, a lot of times, you know, you're paying for... Uh, the scents that are added to that. Some people uh, like fragrance-free products. Uh, we have those as well. Uh, there's also uh, a whole compounding issue, Tom, of in the pharmacy area of Max Medicine Mart, where we can help you with that as well. And we've had folks come in uh, needing an anti-inflammatory. Uh, we've got those. You know, people think that aspirin cream is an anti-inflammatory. Really, it's just for pain. It doesn't really reduce the inflammation. Uh, but you can get a prescription from your physician uh, that has a product like uh, ketoprofen in it, which is an anti-inflammatory drug. Uh, if you have a lot of pain, they can put lidocaine in there. Uh, if you have neuropathy, and I know a lot of folks that get out there in the yard, you know, over the course of time they will do nerve damage uh, and to their hands, to their feet. A lot of times uh, you can uh, add things like gabapentin, uh, amitriptyline. Uh, these are, are medications that have been shown to uh, help reduce the pain associated with uh, the nerves or uh, another way of putting it, neuropathy. So uh, there's all sorts of things that we can compound for you at very reasonable prices. A lot of times uh, those prescriptions will be uh, help be paid for by insurance. Sometimes it won't be, but they're usually uh, very affordable. Get a good bang for your buck on that. So that's uh, just some of the things. And, of course, we've got the great Burt's Bees products that are out there as well. They have a lot of good ointments as well. For, uh, for the weekend warriors, and uh, if you do have scrapes and the, the tissue is actually opened, then we've got some antibiotic uh, creams that can help you reduce the uh, risk of getting an infection. And a lot of times, uh, you know, the tissue might not necessarily be broken, but you can get a bruise uh, from just a fall, uh, especially if you uh, are on a blood thinner or an antiplatelet agent. If you take a medication like Plavix, uh, you know, there's Eliquis, uh, Coumadin, of course, Heparin, Lovenox. All those products uh, tend to make you uh, more apt to bruise, and it doesn't take a big blow sometimes for that to happen. Sometimes you can just graze something, and then you look down a couple of days and you've got a, a big black and blue mark on you. Uh, in that case, there's a product out there called Tramiel, hmm. and it's uh, actually a, a German company that uh, came up with Tramiel years ago. The active ingredient in that is Arnica. And that is a, a natural product that helps reduce inflammation, but it also helps uh, with bruising. And uh, we've talked about it, Tom, before. A lot of the um, area baseball players uh, make tracks to Max and come in here and get that trial because it's really effective on strawberries where they will slide into second base or slide into uh, the home plate and uh, take off a little top layer of skin there. And, of course, it kind of when you look at it, it kind of looks like a strawberry. And you put this on there, and it heals up quicker, and it tends to bruise less. So uh, these are uh, really, really good products that have been around for years, uh, some of them natural and some of them not, and some of them that have to be compounded. But we've got creams uh, for all the weekend warrior activities here at Max Medicine Mart. Talking to Dr. Barry Walton from Max. You can make tracks to Max. You do on Center Street in Kingsport, open seven days a week. Then if you take it to the next level and get a – uh, roll an ankle or a pop a knee, pop an elbow, need some braces or splints, you've got those and got a full line of those. Tell us about that for Max. Well, Tom, that's right. If you come in the front doors of Max Medicine Mart and take an immediate right, you will see our medical equipment department. And we have probably one of the best selections in the area with uh, the different uh, joints and braces, supports uh, for different things, uh, areas of the body. Uh, you know, I've, I've I've not broken very many bones in my life. I've been very fortunate. I'll knock on my head because I need to knock on wood. <laughs> but uh, that's uh, one of the things that we like to do is is let people know that you know we're real people too. We've lived life. Uh, when I was in college, I uh, playing trying to play basketball. Uh, I would roll my ankle. I uh, just had one ankle that was especially weak. And the last time uh, when the tendon, uh, when I rolled the ankle, the tendon actually pulled a, a chunk of bone off. So it's, uh, it can be very painful. Uh, it will swell up uh, like nobody's business. It will turn all sorts of funky colors. 
Uh, but uh, and that's where the things like Tramil come into play. But for braces uh, or supports, there's all sorts of different kinds. There's the, the traditional sleeve where you just kind of slip it on like a sock and the heel will be out uh, and the toes will be free. But there's also the kind that have the heels in it. There are kinds that have metal stays on the side so that you are even less likely to roll it in the future. It gives you extra added support. Uh, but there's uh, also the same uh, type of thing for the knee. Uh, there's uh, lower back braces as well, uh, for upper support, uh, abdominal support. You know, a lot of folks have uh, abdominal issues where uh, the, the, weakness, and the weakness of the muscles in the abdomen have made it so that they can't really control uh, the abdomen too well. And when you're trying to do yard work and get down on the ground, it can be a, a very painful situation. So those are, are some of the things that we have here at Max Medicine Barn. Of course, if we can get down even to fingers, and uh, I noticed uh, I had to go get uh, uh, an oil change for uh, Kena's car yesterday, so I was uh, at a business here in town and uh, the little lady there had uh, a arthritic uh, glove where the fingers are free but it helps give you warmth inside the fingers a lot of times when we're out working especially in uh, you know the weather we're having now where it's just nice and warm it's not so big of a problem but we're getting ready to come up on the weekend and of course the weather's going to take a turn for the, uh, the worse and we're going to get a little bit more cold uh, and cold can really constrict that blood flow in the hands and it can be very uh, much more difficult to do yard chores. Uh, gloves like the arthritic gloves uh, can really help with that. Uh, and and you, know, you see it all around. You see, you know, you're seeing more and more people. And this is a good thing, Tom. We're seeing more and more people. You know, that are out in public, uh, having their braces on. And the reason that's a good thing is because in years past, these people would be staying at home, not doing anything. These people, you know, they're not letting these things slow them down. These supports are allowing them to get out and about, do their business, do the things they need to do. So that's the uh, the really important thing about, you know, dealing with uh, us here at Max Medicine Mart. We want to make sure that you can function and get out there and do the things you need and want to do, uh, not be uh, homebound, if at all possible. We want to do everything we can to make sure that you are uh, able to do the things you need to do, be mobile, and carry on with a higher quality of life. So that's what we're really focused on here and uh, the back uh, braces, the knee supports, the ankle braces, uh, all of these different things can help uh, in that regard. And uh, also, Tom, of course, you know, you and I have talked about this before. You know, I, there's not a day goes by that I don't wear my support socks. Uh, those are, are things that are very important, too. I was told a long time ago, and it, it still holds true, that uh, when you have a job like uh, being a pharmacist, most of the time you're going to be on your feet. You need to make sure you keep those uh, legs uh, in as good a shape as you can try to keep my weight at a reasonable level and uh, wear those support socks uh, to help my legs so that I don't develop uh, varicose veins. Uh, so that's a, a very important thing to help. You know, you, you only get two legs, so you need to take good care of them, I was told. So I've, I've taken that to heart. And uh, those support socks that we have, uh, a great selection of as well here at Max Medicine Mart. Are, it's, it's a great way to start as far as taking care of your legs. Donald, Dr. Barry Walton from Max Medicine Mart. Uh, coming up here, we've got a, just this breaking news, very sad story out of NASCAR. I'll tell you all about that coming up here in yeah, just a few minutes. And uh, this one, man, comes out of left field involving the Joe Gibbs family. So we'll tell you all about that coming up here in just a second. Last but not least, uh, of course, now product line is 20% off through the end of March. But, uh, again, this, the weather's conducive to be outside doing things. And, yeah, we've got a cold snap coming up, but it's going to go back to warm weather. Water. You always preach drink lots and lots of water, and and uh, again, you wanted to mention that to us again today. Tom, that's right. The the water that we, you know, we have, we got uh, lots of different uh, kinds, lots of different styles. Uh, it can be pH uh, that can be affected. Uh, all that's your acid base levels. Uh, very important. We've got uh, different ones that have minerals in them, so there's different kinds of taste to the water. Uh, you can really tell the difference in some of these waters. I can tell you. Uh, but it's uh, just a great way to make sure that your body has everything it needs in the right proportions. A lot of times uh, we don't understand, you know, why we our body doesn't function as well as we would want it to, and a lot of times it's due to dehydration. Uh, just a small amount of dehydration can cause, um, you know, really the organs in your body to really take a tumble for the worse. And by the time you notice that you're dehydrated, by the time that you notice that your lips are dry, your mouth might be dry, it's usually too late. It's usually to the point where it has already affected other systems in your body. So it's very important to make sure you stay hydrated. Uh, most of us don't drink enough water during the day, so that's just something that you need to kind of make a mental note of. You know, I need to you know, start off the day, maybe take a bottle of water with me. 
uh, maybe at lunch grab another bottle of water, uh, maybe about 3 o'clock in the afternoon do that again, and then maybe at night do it again. Um, you know, it, it can really make your body function at a much higher level. Uh, things that happen when we're dehydrated, Tom, uh, it can range anything from organ failure uh, to things just like mental confusion. Uh, you cannot focus and stay sharp mentally if you're dehydrated, and one of the organs that's affected is the brain. So you just don't think of things like this normally, but uh, it, it is very important. You know, you notice athletes all the time. Uh, you hardly ever see an athlete anymore without a water bottle nearby. So uh, they have understood uh, the sports science uh, part of, uh, of and the importance of water. Uh, the rest of us need to do that as well. Uh, as we get older, we tend to drink less. And, of course, that's one of the things that makes our skin dehydrated, which is the largest organ in the body, the skin. So uh, these are things that you can do to, to help yourself to live a more uh, high-quality life and help a, lo- a longer life. Uh, we, you know, we don't want to just live longer. We want to live a longer, high-quality life. So that's what you can do just by taking the simple step of focusing on staying hydrated through the day. So we can help you out with that here at Max Medicine Mart in the Good Food Grocery section. Open seven days a week. They are the R. Give me the hours you open, my friend, at Max Medicine Mart. Tom, Monday through Friday, we're here from 8 in the morning until 7 in the evening. Saturdays, 8 till 6, and Sundays, 1 to 5. So for all your health care needs, make tracks to Max. Make tracks to Max. Great report again. Good luck on that bracket this weekend. I'll talk to you next. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> I'll talk to you next Wednesday. Take care, brother. Always yeah. look forward to talking to you. Yes, sir. Likewise. Good man right there, our buddy, Dr. Barry Walton from Max Medicine Mart. Make tracks to Max that you do here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show again. Uh, sports cream, sports braces, they've got them in stock ready to go on Center Street in Kingsport. And again, they are open seven days a week, and be sure to drink lots and lots of water. Sad story out of NASCAR, J.D. Gibbs, the son of Pro Football Hall of Fame coach Joe Gibbs and the president of Joe Gibbs Racing, has begun treatment for symptoms impacting areas of brain function, including speech and processing issues. 46 years old. Reducing his attendance during race weekends, but Joe or J.D. Gibbs will continue many of his day-to-day responsibilities with the team. Uh, Joey Logano, quote, it's terrible. Sometimes life doesn't make much sense. You look at J.D. and I look at him as a very healthy person. He's in great shape and obviously a great person, very godly. Joey Logano goes on to say, God has a reason for this. Don't know what it is. A lot of times we're confused about it, but it makes sense in the long run. Right now it doesn't for anybody. All I can say is thoughts and prayers go out to him. That's Joey Logano going again to, uh, as we said, J.D. Gibbs, the son of Joe Gibbs, who's uh, begun treatment for symptoms impacting areas of brain function, including speech and processing issues. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean dementia? Is that what that means? Uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Had that mic off again. I had it. Yeah. There. I was adjusting my headset. Got gotcha. you. Uh, anyway, impacting uh, areas of brain function, including speech and processing issues. So 46-year-old Gibbs will begin treatment, to re- and that will cause him to reduce his attendance, attendance during race weekend. So uh, team says the cause was head injuries, likely suffered earlier in life. But, again, he played sports, played football, also had a short career as a race car driver, enjoys other extreme activities. So I don't know if they can, can I actually go back and trace that to that. Uh, it'd be hard. Yeah, be, he evidently was involved in a lot of different aspects where you could have, uh, you know, trauma to the head. So, mm-hmm. so anyway, that's the story coming out of the Joe Gibbs Racing Camp. J.D. Gibbs beginning treatment for symptoms impacting areas of brain function, including speech and processing issues. He is only forty-six years old. Quick break. We'll come right back. We've got uh, before we go to the break. Let me tell you about the folks at Antioch Baptist Church. I told Pete I'd tell you all about this Easter is the Super Bowl the church calendar the most important day of the year for those of the Christian faith, the death, burial, and resurrection. Also a time when many look back to the church at Antioch Baptist in Johnson City next weekend. They'll invite you to one of the two Easter services at 9 and 11. Uh, Were you there? We'll use, as the name of the drama, we'll use media, drama, music, and teaching, inviting you to look at the Easter scene and decide if you see yourself in those at the cross. Antioch, located at 1014 Antioch Road, about a mile east of East Tennessee State at the corner of Seminole and Antioch. That's next Saturday morning, Easter Sunday. Two services at 9 and 11, again, in Johnson City, Antioch Baptist Church. And again, it'll be the Easter drama entitled, Were, 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 
Were you there? <laughs> were. I didn't say it right. Not no. were you there. Say that for me. W-E-R-E. Were. Were you there? There you go. Coming up next weekend. <laughs> it's been a Wednesday. Quick break. We'll be right back. Uh, we'll continue on to the Tom Taylor Sports Show right after you hear this. It's not just a race. It's the place. A place to set up a tent, park the RV, and start emptying the coop. A place to fire up the grill in the Tennessee Hills and take in the best short track racing in NASCAR. The place is the last great Coliseum. Bristol Motor Speedway. Hope you'll join us on April 19th for the Food City Five. Call 423-BRISTOL or visit bristoltix.com. It's not just a place. It's Bristol, baby! From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at brackenpaving.com. It's easy to buy insurance and forget about it. But the more you learn about your coverage, the more gaps you might find. Like how you thought you were covered for this. Check it out, Mom. When you're really only covered for this. Or how you figured you're covered for this when you're actually paying for this. You might be surprised at what's hiding in your coverage. Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ta -da, bum, 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 bum. See what might be hiding in your coverage at farmers.com slash gaps. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at FCA.org. Welcome to the Tom Taylor Sports Show on this Wednesday edition. Again, the 25th day of the month, 33 days we've been together in our week number seven of the Tom Taylor Sports Show. And let's go right to the phonies there, our buddy Greg Salyer from Johnson City with our weekly Reds report. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? I'm good, Tom. How are you? Just fine, sir. Just fine. Now, before we, came, before we got a hold of you, Horace and I, we were talking about the Reds, and I'm not sure how we even got into it. We were talking about spring training. Oh, I know what it was. That's because you're down in the Reds. I am. The you're, Reds are 9-9. You're nine a Reds and nine. fan, and you're down in You're them. right. I, just, there's just no energy. I'm not excited about them. They didn't do anything off season to help their cause. It's basically the same team that underachieved last year. So, having said all that, Horace jumps out there and says, Cardinals come to town the first weekend series. They'll sweep the Reds, I said. No, no, I said two out of three. Oh, two out of three. Well, they'll win the series, two out right. of three. Or sweep. And I said, not a chance. Reds see the Cardinals coming. They just they fold. They cave. So, we've got a little candy bar bet going. Or, no, it's a Cracker Barrel bet. That's right. Yeah. I'm going to say the Reds won't win that series. He says they will. Right or wrong, the Reds typically don't do well against the Cardinals. Right or wrong? Uh, unfortunately, that's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So well, th Does that mean you're – you're downing the Reds too? That you don't believe oh, in them? No, absolutely not. No, I, I, I'm the eternal optimist. <laughs> I, I, I'm hoping the Cardinals come in there and the Reds sweep them. There you go. Now, but they're nine and nine. And see, you said you told me church the other day. Well, that's okay. I'm all right with that. I said, but I want to win every game. I'm not happy with nine and nine in spring training. I want to be better than that because we've got something to prove. We woefully underperformed last year. And so the Reds, to me, have got to come out with a little energy and a little, uh, little umph about them and say we're better than we showed last year. I'm not seeing that at 9-9. Nine and nine. Yeah, you know, uh, April is a tough schedule for the Reds, too. I mean, you look at, uh, at who they face, and, and a lot of it's in the division, almost all of it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be tough. But, uh, you know, I think if they come through April and they're, they're over 500, uh, I think they're in great shape. He, he asked me who the big acquisition was. I said, well, the best I can tell is Marlon Bird. I said, I'm not sure it's going to get you a pennant. But I, I just, Votto, Bruce, I mean, those guys, I just never seen their energy. They got rid of Dusty Baker because they said there wasn't enough spark to the team and, and there any more spark than there was before. So uh, I love the Reds. That's my team. But I'm just not fired up about them. You are, of course. 
And so uh, that's where we differ. But Horace has jumped out there and made me – he tricked me into betting against my own team. So <laughs> – <laughs> but the uh, they open up with the Pirates and the Cardinals, and they go to Chicago. So yeah, everything starts early in the division. You can get all those games. And I mean, do you see any big acquisitions? What was the biggest move in the offseason for the Reds besides Marlon Bird to make this a better team? Yeah, I, I mean that was probably the, the biggest move they had. Um, you know, Votto is looking better. You know, he hit his first home run of the spring. Uh, this past week, and and it was I saw it live. It was a monster shot when he hit it, and uh, you know. So we just hope that he comes back a different player than he was last year. That's that's one of the biggest things. Uh, looks like he may be hitting second in the lineup instead of third. Um, that's not a bad thing, you know. I, I think with somebody like him, you've got to you've got to ask the question: Do you want him to score a hundred runs a year, or do you want him to drive in a hundred runs a year? Um, he can probably do one or the other but not both, and a lot of that's going to have to do with where you hit him in the lineup. And uh, You know, he's been hitting second a lot in spring training, and I, I have a feeling we're going to see him there uh, throughout the season too. We're talking to Greg Salyer, our Reds report each week, and so I'm a big Reds fan. I'm down on them. or not down on them. I'm just not – I'm not excited about them. I guess it should be. It's everybody starts 0-0 uh, coming up here in a week or so for the opening day of the – I think they open up on the 6th, a week from a week from Monday, but – uh, okay, so you got Marlon Bird was a big acquisition. Offensively, who's – I mean, is Bruce doing good in the in spring training right now? Is Votto doing good? Who's leading the team offensively and a team that needs some offense based on last year? Well, you know, Mesoraco's doing okay. Uh, Brandon Bosch is going to make the team. I think that's, that's going to be just a given at this point. Came in as a non-roster invitee and uh, has just uh, hit the cover off the ball. I mean, he, he's just – uh, done well. He won't start, but he's going to be that guy that's going to come off the bench and, and give him some spark. Um, probably the fourth outfielder as well. You know, and I guess one of the questions we have to ask too is which Marlon Bird are we going to get? Are we going to get the guy that hit 25 home runs last year and uh, and had a really good strong season, or are we going to get the guy from the year before who was released twice? You know, so I think that's a question we've got to ask. Um, hopefully we get the guy from last year, and, and uh, he's going to hit with some power and uh, driving a lot of runs. All right, that's the questions I'm asking, too. So, you look, Cardinals are 9-7, and seven, Pittsburgh 10-9 and nine out of the division, Cubbies are 9-12, and 12. where's Milwaukee? They're 8-11, and 11. the Reds right in the middle of the pack. So, you got the Cardinals and yeah. Pirates better right now. Marlon Bird, you just asked the same question I asked, okay, what kind of guy, which one we're going to get, which Votto we're going to get, which Jay Bruce we're going to get. Again, I love the Reds, but I just don't see any major changes for them to better themselves. In fact, they got rid of two guys, Alfredo Simon and uh, Latos from last year's team that looked like, and you fought them a whole lot closer than I did, but it looked like that was horse. Looked I, like uh, Something popped up. I don't know what that was. <laughs> it looked like to me that that may have been one of the main stages of the team last year was uh, the starting pitching and, and the bullpen versus offense, right or wrong. Well, the bullpen wasn't very good last year, but the starting pitching was definitely one of their strong points. And, um, you know, of course, uh, right now, Cueto has uh, gone to the Dominican Republic. He's uh, He's got a family issue there. Someone in his family, they haven't released uh, who it is or anything. He uh, must be extremely ill. They say he's been at the, the hospital a lot. He's still doing his workouts while he's there, but um, he's he's away from the team. Currently, uh, a good thing that I'm that I'm anxious to see is tomorrow. Uh, Michael Lorenzen is going to get the start in place of Cueto. Um, this is a guy I'm big on. I think he's going to be a, a, a great major league player one day. He may start the year out in the bullpen. Um, I, I will be surprised if he doesn't make the team. Um, but he he may be that fifth starter. Uh, I think Jason Marquis may end up in that fourth starter position right now. Um, and then maybe either Rizal Iglesias or Michael Lorenzen are probably kind of fighting it out for that fifth one. And uh, they're probably going to have a sixth one just because of uh, Homer Bailey not being ready for um, a couple weeks. So he'll probably miss two starts or so. And uh, we'll see what happens there. But I'm kind of high on that guy, uh, Lorenzen. I, I'm anxious to see what he does tomorrow. All right, before I let you go again, uh, our buddy Greg Salyer, what's going to be on the sermon menu for this coming Sunday at the Old Church House? Oh, we're going to be in Second Corinthians chapter 5, talking about two radical transformations. Awesome. That'll be coming up Sunday morning at what time at Southwestern Baptist Church? 
1045. 1045 every every Sunday. Good job. So, all right, I'll try and get more positive about the Reds between now and next week because next week is the last week of spring training, right? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, day after Easter yeah. uh, season starts. Opening day. All right, so go Reds. I'll, I'll try and change my tune. Go Reds, and <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you next week. Great, great report. Uh, thanks, Tom. See you. Okay, good job again, our buddy Greg Sally with our weekly Reds report. All right, I'm hearing this. Which Marlon Bourbon are going to get? All right. Then we got Cueto down to the Dominican Republic. Like I said, he's been gone for almost a week. Uh, and I understand, taking care of a family issue, but he's not there, and he's the ace of the staff. Uh, Homer Bailey, one of the starters on the shelf. He's not going to be ready to go till mid-April at the earliest. All right. Votto's hit his first home run. We've been playing, what, 18 games now. He's had one home run. And, of course, I don't know how many games he's played, but uh, that's, that's not got me feeling good because he's had one home run. <laughs> uh, haven't heard anything about Jay Bruce. In fact, Greg didn't elaborate too much on him. Uh, Devin Mesoraco, the catcher, has had a good spring. But he's been out. He took, you know, got hit in the head in one of the games. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny, but I'm thinking <laughs> nothing. it's like what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. So we're not, we, you know, we're get we don't need what ifs. We need to come out of the gate, like you said, first seven games. I mean, you got the Cardinals or Pittsburgh, the Cardinals, and you go to Wrigley to battle the Cubs, which That's obviously first series, yeah, which obviously, and go back, and then after that, you go to St. Louis. Yeah. So first four series against your division, which is this for everybody else, obviously. Cardinals, Pittsburgh, and all, and then you go to St. Louis, you go to the or go to the Cubbies, and you go to St. Louis for the first four series. So uh, after those four series, I'll be able to tell you what kind of team we're going to have because <laughs> I'm just not. I mean, he kept saying, and, and I understand his optimism, but you know, which are we going to get a horse? It's the old horse or the new horse? We're going to get this, we'll get that, and you know, worst Quato, Bailey's on the shelf. We got rid of two good pitchers. I said, I'm just not fired up about this team. So uh, at one point of the season. And the off season, the uh, Reds management gave everybody kind of a vote of confidence because a lot of the Reds fans are up in arms saying we've not done a whole lot to better ourselves. So anyway, yeah. that's the Reds report, and well, let's, let's find out. Let's just jump into uh, Toronto then. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Daniel Norris is pitching today. Yeah, uh, he's on the mound. He's uh, starting the bottom of the fifth. The Blue Jays are up two to one. Uh, he's allowed two hits, one run, and five strikeouts. All right, read those numbers again. How many innings? He's pitching in the bottom of the fifth, right, so he's, he's gone through four. Four innings. Four innings. He's got uh, two hits, one run. Uh, looks like one earned run, five strikeouts. Giving up two hits, or earned run, and struck out five and four, yeah, and four, four innings. innings. Yeah, and he's pitching now in the bottom of the fifth. They're playing the, the Orioles. So out of 12 outs, out of four, see, four innings times three, it's 12 outs out of those ERA's 12 2. outs. 7. He struck out almost half the fa folks yeah. he's faced, so yeah. I like him. Yeah. I mean, I Hope he makes the team. Or I think he's in the t on the team. Hope he uh, gets a starting pitching nod. I like him come to the Reds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we think Homer <laughs> Bailey's going to be good. We think Johnny Quaid will be good. We're hoping for good things from Marlon Bird. We're hoping for. Good. I'm thinking no, 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 no. We have to be more. I mean, you look at the Cubs. Open up their checkbook. Spend a ton of money. Oh, they're still the Cubs. Whatever. They spent a ton of money. Pirates got better in the off season. Cardinals definitely got better in the off season. Brewers, eh, they're up there selling nachos on a stick. They're all right, but I don't think they got all that much better. But I'm just not uh, – I guess you've heard me 14 times now being redundant. I'm just not <laughs> You're excited. You're not fired about, up. No. You're not fired up. In any way, shape, or form, I fired up for this team. No. <laughs> so what I am fired about is the thought for the day. That's what's got me fired up. There is no failure except in no longer trying, horse. No failure except when you don't try anymore. Then you're a failure. As long as yep. you're trying – there is no failure except in no longer trying. So uh, there you go. It's just that simple. That's the thought for the day. No failure except in no longer trying. So when you stop trying, you're a failure. It's over. You never quit. Never, never quit. Never stop trying. And there's no failure except when you stop trying. That's our thought for the day. Brought to you by our buddy Larry Kaiser from Nationwide Insurance at 282-1389. 282-1389, the number to call. And, again, he's located in Johnson City. And you can find him very easily by calling him or by going to the web at kaiserl at nationwide.com. And we certainly appreciate him very, very much giving you the thought for the day. Kaiserl at nationwide.com. We put members first because we don't have shareholders. And, of course, uh, one of our big sponsors coming up for Bristol Live uh, next month will be the folks from Nationwide Insurance. Very excited about that. In fact, we are, what's today? Today is the 25th. We got six. 
Woo. We got 22 days till Bristol Live. Woo-hoo. Baby, I'm getting jacked up. I'm ready. And Nationwide is going to be one of those folks sponsoring our show, Bristol Live, four day show. Do you actually sleep during those days? You know, I sat down last night, added up the hours. I got I got my assignment from the Speedway. Thirty nine hours to be talking. In three days. Four days. Four days. Yeah, but still. I mean we got eight to eight couple days and do I get much sleep? Nah. But I'll just crash when it's over. But uh I can't wait. It's it's a lot of fun. Get to hang out with a lot of great people at the speedway, but yeah, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. So and of course you get you know, it ain't like I'm up there for free, so you get compensated for it. So looking forward to it. Twenty two days from today. By the way, NASCAR driver having a birthday today. She would be who? Danica Patrick. She's the birthday girl 35? today. Thirty-five. Yep, thirty-five today. <laughs> How did I know that? Little Danica. That bothers me that you knew that that quickly. I saw the yeah, sporting, right. I was yeah. looking at the sports headlines before we started. I think today. I need to make a call to Mrs. V and say, <laughs> Mrs. V, Horace knew like that. She's thirty-five today. I was going through all the different venues, you know, the yeah. Major League Baseball, basketball, NASCAR is one of them. Checking all the sports headlines, and that was yeah. that was right there. Oh, I'm Danica sure. Danica celebrates yeah. thirty-five. I'm sure. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> You ain't you can't sell me, cowboy. I've been around you too long. So uh, he knew Danica Patrick's birthday was boom thirty five. Stuart today. Haas, I'm always on top of it. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, right. Uh huh. All right. In your humble opinion, do you think this young lady's attractive? Um, in her own way, I guess. Yeah. There you go. So I mean, some. So I know some people think you know, they think she's a knockout and go gaga, and then I know other people. Eh. Not so much. But. I mean, everybody's got their own flavor, I guess. Yeah. And yeah, she's not my flavor, so. Can no. she drive a race car? Um, she can drive a race car, but she's got a long way to go. She's got to get in that rookie mode. She's still in that rookie mode. Yeah. I think she needs to uh, come out of her shell. I think she needs a break. I think she gets a break to give her some confidence because I don't think she has the confidence, uh, even though she's been out there for. I just. Yeah. Uh, I say confidence. I think she just needs a break. She needs to win a race. Or top five, a couple consistent top fives. Instead something, of yeah. always in the 20s. She always seems yeah. to end up in the 20s pack. It's not the car. It's not the equipment. Yeah, she just needs to take it to the next run one time yeah. and get that confidence boost and be ready to go. Speaking of NASCAR this weekend, Chase Elliott will make his cup debut this weekend in Martinsville. We'll tell you all about that tomorrow. We'll start getting closer to racing up the road in Martinsville, the paper clip. For Friday, pole qualifying. Then Saturday, the Truck Series. Xfinity has the week off. Truck Series, Camping World Truck Series on Saturday. And the big boys roll into Martinsville Speedway. Uh, the best drivers in the world for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series on Sunday afternoon. Again, J.D. Gibbs, son of Pro Football Hall of Fame coach Joe Gibbs and president of Joe Gibbs Racing, has begun treatment for symptoms impacting areas of brain function, including speech and processing issues. That is a scary thing team announcing that the treatment will reduce his attendance during race weekends. 46-year-old Gibbs will continue many of his day-to-day responsibilities with the team, and that's just a very, very tough situation there. And Our thoughts and prayers go out to Joe Gibbs. You wouldn't, of course, you can't see it up here. I got a picture taken with him up here on the wall, and I had a chance to speak with him at length when he comes to Bristol. He kind of seeks me out, and I kind of seek him out. We talk of all things Christianity and you couldn't find a more godly man, more faithful man than Joe Gibbs. And so his faith is being put to the test, obviously, with the announcement about his son, 46-year-old J.D. Gibbs, one more time beginning treatment for symptoms impacting areas of brain function. Whew, man, that's tough, including speech and processing issues. And, again, we say thanks to Larry Kaiser, Nationwide Insurance. Smart Ride is the name of that program. It kind of went off a little tangent. Smart Ride gives you personalized feedbacks to – Help you make even safer driving decisions. Join this free six-month program and start saving today. Six-month program. Safer you drive, the higher the discount you get, up to 30%. Wow. Wouldn't that be nice to get a premium uh, reduction of 30% off of your car insurance or your vehicle insurance? Oh, yeah. You can earn an instant 5% discount if you have a nationwide policy when you just sign up. Safer drivers cost less to insure. They want to pass that savings on to you. So give them a call and you have and find out more about the, and I appreciate that, the Smart Ride program, 282-1389, 282-1389, the number to call. Can they see that? Yep. Larry Kaiser, Nationwide Insurance, the big easy we call him. He's about six foot twelve. Don't want to mess with him. He'll snap you like a twig. <laughs> 282-1389 is the number to call. We got into lunch bet one day, and I, you know those name that tune? You can name it in one tune or two tunes. Name that in one note, two or notes. Or one note. Yeah. I'm sorry. Name that one note or two note. So we get into this discussion because he knows uh, 
martial arts. Yeah, I said, can you snap me like a twig in one move or two moves? He said, I can snap you like a twig in one move. I said, really? <laughs> He's talking about smack. I said, really? He said, yes. <laughs> about two moves? He said, I can snap you like a twig in one move. And he's six foot twelve. I don't want to mess with him. So he's a big boy, but he's also a great insurance agent. Nationwide is on your side with the Smart Ride program. We'll take a quick break. We got Doug Fritz ready to go. He's going to talk a little high school baseball, a little high school softball. See what's going on there, and we'll do that right after you hear this on this Wednesday edition of the Tom Taylor Sports Show. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at brackenpaving.com. Your life is always changing. You never know what shape it will take or how your financial needs might change. But if we talk about your investments and how they can provide for you and your family, the future becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today. At Farmers, we make you smarter about insurance. Because what you don't know can hurt you. What if you didn't know that it's smart to replace washing machine hoses every five years? What if you didn't know that you might need extra coverage for more expensive items? And what if you didn't know that teen drivers are four times more likely to get into an accident? So, The more you know, the better you can plan for what's ahead. Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. Hey, Diet Mountain Dew driver Dale Earnhardt Jr. here. On April 19th, I'll be racing at Bristol Motor Speedway in the Food City 500. Tickets start at just $64, so call 423-BRISTOL or visit bristoltix.com today to see me and my Diet Mountain Dew team in Bristol. It's Bristol, baby. Back with the Tom Taylor Sports Show on this Wednesday. A couple of college basketball notes. The coaching carousel continues. Nevada, University of Nevada has hired LSU assistant Eric Musselman as their new coach. And Mark Price goes to coach the UNC Charlotte, I believe 49ers is the name of their school. And, and so there's a couple of new coaches, young coaches getting a chance to be the head coach. And Eric Musselman goes to Nevada. And Mark Price, former NBA star, goes to coach UNC Charlotte. Let's go to the phone. He's our buddy Doug Fritz from the Johnson City Press. Good afternoon, sir. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are y'all? Just fine. Thank you for checking in with us. Uh, before we get into baseball and softball brackets, how's your brackets going so far for March Madness? Well, I picked a, I picked a lot of favorites, and the, I did three of them on CBS Sports, where you can you pick up the three. So I went with Kentucky and two of them, and Arizona and another one, and uh, you know stuck with the Wisconsin's and Dukes and people like that. So everything's holding steady there. The one. The one bracket where I took a few chances on, I got burned with with Iowa State going out early. So, uh, you know, it's it's hard it's hard to pick those things you know, from all the way through. I can tell you that much. Absolutely, I don't know what the odds are for somebody to get a perfect bracket, but it's got to be way up there. And so they start again tomorrow night. More men's college basketball for March Madness. High school baseball got some surprises early on. Let's start with the Big Seven Conference. How about those Crockett Pioneers playing some really good baseball for Scott Hagee? Well, I tell you that you know they've they've had some really good teams here over the, the you know past five six years or so here and, and and Coach Aggie tends to when he when he gets a little bit of talent in there and and has some decent pitch and he's usually competitive even with Science Hill and DB he doesn't always beat them but you know the win win yesterday over DB was a real big one because it's just a it's just a mental thing sometimes I think for Crockett when they play Science Hill and DB so they're they're off to a fantastic. 
Daniel Boone playing well right now. Science Hill DB, that's the top four in the Big Seven Conference. But, again, uh, Rob Hoover's got Daniel Boone playing some pretty good baseball right now, too. Yeah, he's got a really good number one pitcher there in Brandon Davis, and uh, he got some good sticks in the lineup. And, and I tell you, Rob's a little bit of an underrated coach. He's a real good one. And, uh, you know, he's young still, but he, he, he knows how to coach the game. And uh, uh, he's doing a, a real good job uh, with them, keeping them up at the top of the big seven. Dobbins Bennett, uncharacteristically, uh, a couple of losses in the conference. Of course, the season's early. Still got all of April to play for the tournament. But uh, DB sitting there with two losses in fourth place in the conference, and that's not typical DB, is it? No, it's not. But, you know, that DB's got some good arms there. And, and, and Ryan Wagner, another young, excellent coach. There's a lot of good young coaches in, in the area and even down to uh, shamelessly uh, throwing a plug for my little brother down at Morristown West. They're off to a great start. But, uh some some really good young coaches all around Northeast Tennessee, and Ryan Wagner certainly one of them. And I know he'll have DB uh, firing all cylinders come tournament time. Talking to our buddy Doug Fritz from the John City Press, uh, Three Rivers Conference Baseball, Solomon South, the winningest team right now in the area. They're undefeated at six and zero, and Anthony Richardson's got them playing well. He does. They've got good speed, good pitching. They play good defense, and they hit the ball. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty much the whole package there, and. Uh, It'll be interesting to see how they've already beaten DB once, and it'll be interesting to see how they mix it up through here against the bigger teams. But as far as that Three Rivers goes, that's a good league, some good teams in it. But right now, South's the cream of the crop right there. No question. Sullivan East at 3-1, and one, Happy Valley 3-3. Three and three. Unicoi County struggling a bit right now with their new coach, Charlie Baxter, of course, stepping down, retiring from last year. Elizabethan, Johnson County, and Sullivan North in the bottom end of the conference right now. But, again, it's early, a lot of baseball to be played. The Watauga Valley Conference, Doug, you look at North Green, uh, they seem to be the, the class of that conference right now in baseball. Yeah, North Green's the team to beat there. They've, they've had such a – they've almost had a little empire there in the past three or four years. And uh, <laughs> Tim Lady, the veteran coach, really knows how to get those kids working together. He's got some good arms. And, and I expect that team to really be knocking at the door um, – for the state tournament this year, once again, they've already made it a couple of times recently. I think they got a great chance of getting down there again. Then you look at softball switching gears. Let's go to the Big Seven again. On top of the pack is uh, and someone that's not there a lot. It's good to see the Volunteer Lady Falcons on top of the Big Seven. Then comes Tennessee High and Crockett. So a little bit of a change to the top there as well. Well, you know, Volunteers got that pitcher Morgan Marshall. And she's just outstanding, and so any time that. Uh, Anytime volunteer takes the field, they're going to have a chance with her in the circle, and uh, uh, I expect them to be right in the mix at the top all year long. And Crockett's an up-and-coming team, and and Daniel Boone hadn't played a lot of games, but they're going to be there. They got an outstanding team, and um, you know, Tyne Seals got some good pitching. I mean, that's a that's a pretty good league there too. I mean, a lot of a lot of good stuff there. Three Rivers Conference, Happy Valley, the number one team right now in softball for the Lady Warriors at 3-1. and one. Unicoi County at 3-0. and oh. Actually, Unicoi County is the number one team, then Happy Valley. Then comes Elizabeth and then Johnson County. So, again, that's kind of a, at this point, obviously, a lot of softball left. This conference is very much up for grabs, isn't it? It is. Unicoi County, though, I think, is, is, the, is the team to beat. I mean, they... they... They hit the ball, they pitch it. They, they got just a, a murderer's row lineup that can just hit the ball out of the park. It, it's four or five different girls at any at back and hit the ball out of the park. And they took care of Happy Valley yesterday. Happy Valley's got a good team. But, uh, you know, Elizabeth is kind of in there as a dark horse. And Johnson County's really good this year. They played Unicoi a 6-5 to five game earlier. But uh, Unicoi is one of those teams along with uh, Greenville, Happy Valley, as far as teams that are looking down the road, hoping to get a chance to do some stuff in the region and beyond. Those are those are three of the top teams in the area. Talking to Doug Fritz again with the John City Press. While talking about Valley Conference softball right now, North Green, the class of the league. Then comes University High. And everybody else is kind of trying to find their way. They being Cloudland, South Green, Hampton, and, and Unica. So right now, again, much like the boys, the uh, team to beat in the Watauga Valley Conference softball at this point is North Green. Doug, let's run down these brackets real quick before I let you go. Let's see what you what your take is. March Man is East Regional. Uh, Friday, North Carolina State in Louisville, Michigan State, Oklahoma. Who do you like in those? Wow, that's that's one of the tough ones. There. I, I'm going to stick with Louisville just because of their, you know, their their coach, their style, their their tournament uh, success rate. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see NC State beat them though. And then 
I'm going to go with the same thing, tournament success rate, and I'm going to go with uh, Michigan State and the coach that always has that team ready and playing at this time of year. Yeah, Tom Izzo. could be Tom Izzo against Rick Pitino in the finals there, which would be a great matchup. But NC State and Oklahoma, hope to have something to say about that. That's in the east. In the south regional, UCLA and Gonzaga and Duke and Utah. Who do you like there? i tell you what. I mean, I haven't personally seen Gonzaga play a lot, but just from everything I'm hearing, and I look forward to hopefully getting to see them play against UCLA. But to me, they should be able to handle UCLA. They already beat them earlier this year at UCLA. That was UCLA's only home loss. And, um, you know, Duke's Duke, and they got a great player at Okafor, and I'm not going to pick against them. So I'm looking at Duke and uh, Gonzaga having a real showdown there in the region final. Midwest. Midwest Regional, Wichita State, the Shockers, and Notre Dame. That'll be played tomorrow night. And also tomorrow night, Kentucky and West Virginia, the nightcap. Who do you like there? Those are two interesting games. I didn't think Wichita State would beat Kansas. And, uh, you know, I don't know whether they can move on again or not. I, I think that they've, that they've hit the end of their road there, and I think that uh, uh, Notre Dame will move on there. But, uh, you know, Kentucky is better than West Virginia, and if West Virginia doesn't come out and play very well, Kentucky will just steamroll them. But West Virginia is so great at causing turnovers. Uh, if Kentucky just comes out and just doesn't play up to their level, and West Virginia's got that turnover routine working, that could be a, a barn burner. And then West Regional, last regional, we'll take a look at Wisconsin and North Carolina. That'll be a great one. And Arizona and Xavier, who do you like there? Well, I think Arizona clearly has got the edge over his savior, and uh, I don't think I don't think that'll be too close. Probably a 12, 15 point game. But you're right about Wisconsin and North Carolina. I can't pick against Wisconsin after what I saw last year and what some NC can do. And uh, I certainly think North Carolina's got some some bits and pieces there that can give Wisconsin some trouble. But uh, I think Wisconsin advances there. There you go. Great report as always, and of course we'll keep him back in here from time to time. Get updates on baseball and softball. Is it just me or this year's flying by? We get through the snow and look up, and now we're looking at April and right around the corner, and school will be out pretty soon. We'll be long be talking high school football again, right? Yeah, just, I mean, three weeks yeah. are basically gone in the in the spring sports season. I'm just kind of getting started with it. <laughs> I could, before I know it, I mean, they're, they're almost halfway through, if you can imagine that. I mean, it's just crazy. It is crazy, but you're keeping us right on top of it. Great report as always. Thank you, my friend. I'll talk to you soon, all right? Uh, thanks, Tom. Yeah, great job. Doug Fritz, again, the sports writer of the John City Press. Appreciate him very, very much. And, again, uh, the teams to beat right now, it's early, but a lot of shuffling going on. But clearly Crockett's having a great year, both baseball and softball for the Pioneers. And, and again, uh, baseball, you've got Boone, Science Hill, uh, there in the Big Seven and the Three Rivers, Sullivan South and Sullivan East are the two teams front running right now, North Green in the Watauga Valley Conference. Then in softball, Volunteer. Tennessee High and Crockett on top right now in the Big 7 for the ladies. Three Rivers, it's Happy, or rather Unicoi County and Happy Valley and Elizabethan. And then in softball in the Watauga Valley, North Green is the team. So we were talking earlier, again, it's the Tom Taylor Sports Show. We're talking earlier about the good folks at Antioch Baptist Church. And I want to, again, tell you one more time about Pete and the folks there coming up again, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, inviting you to celebrate Easter on April the 4th and 5th, on the 4th at noon, on Antioch Road at the Pavilion for a community Easter egg hunt, including free food and prizes, plus free pictures of your kids with the Easter Bunny. That's next Saturday a week. Then on Sunday, next Sunday, Easter Sunday, join them for one of the two Easter worship services at 9 o'clock and at 11 o'clock at Antioch Baptist Church, located on Antioch Road, about a mile west of East Tennessee State, in the corner of Antioch and Seminole, were you, uh, as a kid, did you have fun? Did you guys have Easter egg hunts growing up in church? Uh, yeah, I just never found any eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was lacking in that department. Send him out for eggs, never found any eggs. <laughs> no. no. I had to wait till Easter Sunday morning. You know, there's an Easter basket there that the Easter bunny dropped by. That's the only way I got any candy. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't fare well in Easter egg hunts? No, I didn't. No. Uh, was there a reason for that? I mean, did I don't know. Your just, siblings hide them from you? I mean, you just didn't. You just weren't good at well, eggs. The, the eggs hunts that I always went to, there was five hundred kids and <laughs> you know twenty <laughs> eggs. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, that's great stuff. That is good stuff. Anyway, they're having an Easter egg hunt next Saturday again at Antioch Baptist Church, and that'll start. What do we say at noon? Yeah, 
at noon and free food and prizes plus free pictures of your kids with Easter Bunny there in the uh, pavilion. Not this Saturday, of course, but next Saturday, which will be the day before Easter. It is the Tom Taylor Sports Show. We told you this top of the show, the little rivalry that has intensified betwixt the New England Patriots and the New York Jets, and it has intensified. Uh, another bizarre turn. Jets filed a tampering charge against the Patriots based on owner Robert Kraft's comments about Darrell Revis, and now it's it's gotten uh, a little dicey again between yeah. these two. It never has really slowed down, but it's gotten – they ramped it up, I guess, another notch. So, Kraft, speaking to reporters at the league meeting in Phoenix, commented for the first time on his star cornerback's departure. Uh, he says, I speak as a fan of the New England Patriots. We wanted to keep him. This apparently was a tit-for-tat move by the Jets, who were irked in January when the Patriots slapped them with a tampering charge. That accusation stemmed from owner Woody Johnson in an end-of-the-season news conference telling reporters, we'd love to have Darrell to come back. So, apparently, he's been the – like a piece of taffy. He's been pulled back and forth. So he leaves the Patriots, goes back to the Jets. Jets accuse the Patriots of tampering. And now the Patriots accuse the Jets of tampering. So <laughs> you've got bad blood between these two, which, are in, which of course, There's are in the same rival. There's always been bad blood. Yeah, but they're in the same division. they got to settle on the field now, yeah. of course. And they will. And they will. Twice a year, but there's always been bad blood. You're right. So uh, he played. But I'm on the Jets side. Are you? <laughs> oh, you yeah. don't like the Patriots? No. Is that on the list over there? Nope. <laughs> We've added three today. Wow. The New England Patriots, N.E. Pats. All right, you don't like the Patriots. No. Uh, Revis, by the way, played for the Jets from 07 to 212, and then the Patriots in 2014 ended up signing a five-year, $70 million contract to go back to the Jets on the first day of free agency. In fact, the deal was announced only five hours after he became a free agent. He wanted out. Uh, from New England for whatever reason. Uh, the Patriots owned the rights to Revis until March the 10th. They decided to decline to exercise a $20 million option that was included on this guy. So uh, he's out. He came back to the Jets. Patriots are mad, so they tampered. Jets are mad because they said they tampered with this guy. And so the bad blood is on. I don't yep. know how do you resolve it. I don't guess you do. It's, I guess the old adage, boys will be boys. I'm not hearing anything from the commish. Of course, he's hanging with famous Jameis. So he's got other he's, he's got other he's got other things he's dealing with, but uh, there's been no official word from the NFL office as to uh, how things are shaking out there between the Patriots and the Jets, or are they going to intervene? Just let them let him go. I guess sounds uh, who like who knows. Yeah, I mean it's it's just it'll be the same story next year. Yeah, yeah, they don't like each other, no, no question. College baseball poll out this week, top ten in college baseball. Let's see, if we know the nicknames. Here we go: Texas A&M, Aggies. Aggies, number one in the country. LSU. Tigers. Second, Vanderbilt. Commodores. Thank you. Number four in the country right now, Texas Christian, TCU. Horn Frogs. Horn Frogs. You got it. Number five, UCLA. Bruins. Number six, Florida. Gators. Gators. Number seven. I can't say that quiet. <laughs> Florida State. Seminoles. There you go. Number eight, Central Florida. Knights. Right. Number nine, Arizona State. Aztecs. There you go. You were rolling. Arizona State Sun Devils. Blue Sun Devils, okay. Yeah. And number 10, the Texas Longhorns. Longhorns. Hook them horns. There you go. That's top 10 in college baseball, the collegiate baseball poll. Uh, let's see. Is Tennessee in there? Virginia Tech? Nope. No, none of our regional teams are in the top 25, or actually top 30 right now in college baseball. So uh, we need to go to a college baseball game. I think we need to. ETSU would be a good one to go to. I think it would be. Uh, maybe not this weekend with the cold no. weather coming, but certainly be a good place to go and get his little popcorn soda pop and, and uh, kick back and enjoy a college baseball game. I'll tell you where you can go on Saturday. You can go to the Bristol Motor Speedway. We'll be there. I hope you'll come by and, and join us. Open house at BMS on Saturday from noon to 3. Everything is free. Uh, there's going to be hot dogs, food serve, compliments of Food City and Pepsi, inflatables, Birthplace of Country Music Alliance folks going to be there. Anybody who has tickets, already have purchased tickets to go to the races in the spring, will have an opportunity to get up there and drive your vehicle on the high banks of Bristol Motor Speedway, which for some folks will be a real treat. And say, if you could, I mean, you told me earlier in the week you probably couldn't, but would you feel, would you like to do that one time, jump in there and go and strap yourself in and cut loose and 
maybe not in your vehicle, but just get in a car and go. You think it'll be good? Uh, what, does testosterone run through my veins? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Does a cow give milk? <laughs> exactly. Is he a redneck? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> So, anyway, they're having that coming up on Saturday. Free food, Pepsi products, giveaways, track laps, interactive displays, kids' activities, victory lane photos, and a chance to meet the brand-new Miss Food City. And then later in the day, uh, the Roadrunner Street Fights will take place at Bristol Dragway. So, and a first-ever drifting competition. All this going on again at the Speedway uh, coming up on Saturday from noon to 3. It is free to get there and enjoy uh, all the good things happening at the Speedway. Now, if you want to go watch the uh, street fights at the dragway, you got to pay 5 bucks to watch and $10 to race. But everything at the open house at Bristol Motor Speedway is free. So uh, we can go up there, and uh, you can be looking up there sporting your wh- – whose shirt would you wear? Tony Stewart's, I guess, if you had a driver T-shirt or your toboggan, you'd be <laughs> – I'd, I'd try to find something that said Stuart Haas on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart Haas. All right, Stuart Haas Racing. Yeah. So you just like the whole team. Not yeah, just... I, well, I like Tony Stewart. I think he's done the right thing by jumping in with, with uh, uh, Haas, <laughs> the Haas Racing. You they got your new Stuart Haas Racing. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's I, – I just like it. Yeah. I'm sorry. So, out of the four drivers, who's your uh, – is Danica at the top? Or you like Stuart oh, no, first? No, no, no. Stuart's my man. Smoke. Okay. I mean, Smoke's no. your man. I, I – <laughs> You see, you got to understand, I grew up in Indiana, too. Right. And I used to go to the sprint car and midget races every Saturday. I loved it. And that's where Stuart came from. Did you see him up there when you were a kid? No, I was before. before uh, he was you. after my time. Okay. But, uh, but, yeah, I love that stuff. And yeah. then, of course, he came up through the open wheel you know, uh, cars, Indy and whatnot, and then jumped into NASCAR. So I just followed him as he came through. And uh, I've been a Stuart fan forever number one Stewart. yeah number two on the team will you like harvick you like bush uh or I danica think, well danica's on the bottom okay. I, I would say harvick and then bush uh but they're close i mean bush can drive a car oh yeah yeah you know? and harvick can too he's got a team now he's got some uh, uh muscle behind him and i think he's going to be in contention again to repeat uh keep his championship all right so, so. All that coming up again, the Stuart Haas Racing. So that's what's coming up, as we said, the open house on Saturday at Bristol Motor Speedway. If you get a chance, check it out. Everything is free at the Speedway. And, again, free food being served, hot dogs and soda pops, compliments of Food City and Pepsi. We'll be there to emcee that event coming up on Saturday from from, uh, noon to 3. So good stuff, good, good stuff. Now, before we commence to roll out of here, Tell us how we can watch this later tonight. We want to say make sure you like us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Tom Taylor Sports Show. Like and follow, and you have been. Thank you for that. And then how do we watch this or listen to this tonight? Well, of course, every uh, weekday from 1 to 3, we're live on livestream.com. And after the fact, if you want to watch it again, which is not much to watch if you want to look at your mug. <laughs> Really? I had to get one in there. Really? Uh, All right. But, you know, the webcam version of our show is on YouTube. I'll get that posted uh, usually in the evening. And But the podcast is where it's at. So you want to listen to the show and listen to it at your leisure, go to TuneIn Radio, go to iTunes or Stitcher, and uh, download the podcast and listen away. So the one you can watch at night, or I say night, anytime, 2 in the morning, 2 in the afternoon, oh, yeah. the next day, the one you can watch would be what? YouTube. Has, YouTube. YouTube. Everything else is audio only, correct? Yeah, now, Livestream.com, if you go to the Tom Taylor Sports page, right, uh, the event page, you'll see all our archived shows there. So you can still go back and watch it through Livestream as well. All right. Okay. So that's going on, and we'll do that again tonight. And we would encourage you to uh, give it a listen, and you do. And the place we're getting the most hit is – Right now, TuneIn Radio TuneIn is Radio. kicking. Yeah, yeah, it's almost 60% of Love all it. the podcasting. So. Thank you. Which is audio only, right? Audio only, yeah. TuneIn Radio. So you don't have to see my mug. <laughs> as you said i gotta look at it here I, for two hours every day <laughs> we can fix that i know <laughs> we can we can make changes quickly oh. uh, let's say minnesota vikings coach mike zimmer reiterated the organization's stance tailback adrian peterson says he expects peterson to honor his contract and play for the team in 2015 we went around this around the horn about this yesterday what do you think who's in the right who's in the wrong here peterson who's getting a new Kind of a new lease on life after the NFL cleared him of what all went down with his uh, off-the-field problems. Or the Vikings would say, look, you're under contract. Uh, you don't want to come back and play with us. We can't help that. You need to be in our camp ready to go. I, I can see both sides, uh, of, and I'm not sure one's right over the other. Um, I think uh, Peterson feels that um, Minnesota probably didn't step up and defend him a little more vigorously 
uh, when he started going through his issues. Um, so I think I, that's kind of why you know it's been bad blood because you know he didn't get to, to play last year. Um, they want him back. You know they did. You know the Vikings did come around and support him. They didn't kick him to the curb. They just suspended him. Uh, so they want him back. They want him to be a part of the program. But Peterson wants to start anew, start fresh somewhere else. And um, so I, you got both sides there. Coach Mike Zimmer says, and I quote, Adrian's under contract for three more years. Yeah. And that's why he signed the contracts, do you not? That's why you get those big bonuses, do you not? That's End true. of quote. So, But contracts can always be circumvented if the right things come into play. I mean, you got to trade. Uh, you know, teams trade players all the time that are under contract. So, But if you sign a contract and you get a bonus, let's say I sign a contract to work for you and you give me a $1,000 bonus, two, I don't know what it is, yeah. $5,000 bonus, and then all of a sudden I don't want to be with you anymore and I want to leave, uh, should I be expecting a letter from your attorney to say, you need to give me that $5,000 back for the bonus? Or when you sign and you get that bonus, you kind of know, it's not refundable. If you're going to break the contract, period, and not play football anymore, that that's 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 an issue. But if you're going to be traded to another team or another team wants to pick you up, mm-hmm. they can assume that liability and pay Minnesota, you know, what that bonus was plus whatever's outstanding on his contract. So, uh, I see both sides. Yeah. By the way, the folks that are looking, uh, recent speculation, purely speculation, the Cowboys and the Arizona Cardinals, teams that might have interest in trading for Peterson, of course, back during free agency, the Raiders. They were looking at him, but I don't know if they've cooled their jets and they got Trent they Richardson. They can't afford him. Well, they may not, but they got Trent Richardson now, and I think that's – there again, I think that's he a fit, bust. He'd be a good fit at Dallas. Who, Trent Richardson? No. Oh, Adrian I mean, Peterson? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he would because they lost their guy yeah. to the Eagles. Yeah. And they're needing a big old burly running back to yeah. tote to mail. So, stay tuned. But, again, Peterson's been very adamant, kind of dug his heels in and said – uh, I'm not interested in going back to the Vikings. Coach Zimmer says, you are expected to be here and be ready to go for the uh, mini workouts. Yeah, I got final numbers on Norris if you want to hear him. Yep. He went six innings, three hits, one run, seven strikeouts. All right, six innings, three runs. How many runs were earned? One. All right, six Only innings. One, six innings, one run, allowed one run. He allowed three hits. Oh, three hits. I'm three sorry. Hits. So, seven strikeouts, three hits, and one earned run over six innings. Yeah. That's – that ought to get you a starting nod, I would think. Yeah, his relief pitcher came in and already allowed one run in the bottom of the seventh. Wow. So it's four to two at, at the moment. But so yeah. nice outing again for Dino, yeah. Daniel yeah. Norris yeah. of Johnson City. Here's your baseball schedule today. We've got a Tennessee high, Virginia high, Abington, Virginia playing at Sullivan East later on tonight. Tri-Cities Christian at University High. That's coming up a little bit later on. Uh, that'll be today, obviously. And then you also have, uh, let's see, that's in softball. In baseball today, you've got the schedule. Did I read the baseball? I'm not sure what I've done. Yes, I read baseball. Tennessee High, Virginia High, Abington at Sullivan East, and Union at Sullivan North. That's baseball schedule. So there we go. Here's softball today. Ooh, Daniel Boone and Crockett, a little cross-county rivalry in Washington County. Those two teams get after each other. Sullivan East to Tennessee High today. Sullivan Central Volunteer and Unica at Cloudland. Those are compliments of the John City Press. Let's make sure I got them over here, too, on schedules for today. And softball for today, you got Sullivan East to Tennessee High, Sullivan Central to Volunteer. And, again, we told you baseball schedules today around the uh, around the area. So that's what's happening there. And, again, want to say thanks to our buddy, the Gator Man from Cherokee Barbershop. Again, Lauren the mirrors. Uh, you got an appointment coming up because it's starting to – you think it's starting to get a little long there? Yeah, uh, get a little shaggy there on the side. I can actually see some bristle. Well, actually, some, I some keep nubbins. it short because there's no more black anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gray. All gray. Yeah, welcome to my world. So, <laughs> yep. So, tell us about Cherokee Barbershop where the haircuts are free. What's it cost you? Eleven dollars for a cup of coffee. Cup of coffee. Haircuts are free. Cup of coffee. You get to keep the cup is eleven bucks, and he's open what six days a week. Eight thirty Tuesday through Saturday. Eight thirty to five Monday through Friday. No, it was Tuesday through Friday. Um, I think it's um, 8.30 to 5. 8.30 to 1, I think, on, on Saturday. Saturdays. Yeah. yeah. Now, the man child goes down and gets his ears lowered, doesn't he? He does. Yeah. Does he get a shave, too? I have no idea. <laughs> I, 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 sometimes if I'm having to fork out the little bit of uh, green stuff to take care of that problem, it yeah. does, does not include a shave. He gets the basic. He gets the basic. If it's on daddy's dime, he gets yeah. the basic. But he's fully employed now, so he should start fending for himself. He's on his own. He's yeah. coming off the feed chain, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and all God's people said, Amen. <laughs> yeah, he's got him a job. So Manchild's going to be paying for his own cuts at Cherokee Barbershop. And again, located on South Road, right down from Tipton Haynes Working Farm. Barber pulls out. That means the Gator Man's in. And we appreciate him so very much. And we'll have him on next week because we'll do the quiz show on Monday. And they got a big event coming up on the 11th, which is coming up in a couple of weeks at the Holiday Inn in Johnson City involving the uh, – the, rev, the officials, TWS, AA officials, and the National Football Foundation. So they got a really cool thing coming up we're going to be a part of on that coming up in a couple of weeks, and we'll tell you more about that. Again, our uh, verse for the day, I am your hiding place. I will protect you from trouble and surround you with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Rejoice in me. Again, we dedicate the show at the beginning and the end. Again, to the man who hung on the cross for us, we do that unashamedly so horace putting the wraps on this thing right. it's been another, a fast two hours yeah another two hours gone our guest again tommy wyman those stupid questions about elvis went two for five today another disastrous day on the quiz show <laughs> dr barry walton from max medicine mart greg salyer the reds report i think it kind of took the air out of his out of his balloon a little bit i was a little down I about the reds he, he's like gosh Tom. you'll hear from it after oh i know i will and also our buddy doug fritz from the johnson city press tomorrow Got more folks ready to go to tell you more about what's happening. Got NASCAR cracking up tomorrow, getting ready to go to Martinsville for that. NCAA basketball starts back up tomorrow night, the brackets. So lots to talk about tomorrow. Come back with us from 1 to 3. I didn't get a chance to talk about the other food items either, so we got to do that tomorrow. Not you on a stick. You're exactly right. We got carried away. We have other uh, food items at other ballparks, right? Well, I had a couple of things I wanted to throw out there, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that tomorrow. We'll lead it with that tomorrow. How's that? <laughs> Is that good? That works. All right, so – for a horse, again, thank you one more time. Our sponsors, Bristol Motor Speedway, American Import and Auto Repair, Jim Klein Farmers Insurance, Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics, Book Lovers Warehouse, Larry Kaiser Nationwide Insurance, Cherokee Barbershop, Max Medicine Mart, Bays Mountain Park, Wells Fargo Financial Network, and Bracken Asphalt Maintenance and Paving. Hit the magic music, would you please? And that'll do it. Horse, see you tomorrow, buddy, from 1 to 3. I'll be here. Coming back, ain't you? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. I like when he's here. He's a fine, fine feller. We're out of time. We sincerely thank you for yours. As always, we'll tell you, till tomorrow, 1 o'clock, win or lose, be a good sport. Thanks for listening, and so long, everybody.